Mic check one, two. You are welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of your favorite podcast, Loose Talk. My name is Osage Arunga. My name is Ayomide Tayo. Mm-hmm. Osage, do you want to do you want to start rapping again? Ah <laughs> uh, no, but I've been listening to a lot of this podcast. I don't know if you want to start using us. You want to start using us to like as a launch pad. rap lines again. As a launch yeah, pad. and launch our Ayo, have we made it categorically clear that we're not this podcast is not for we're not putting any No, we're not. On. It's not a rollout. No, 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 we're not. We're not. Unless Dev Jam. <laughs> Ayo, Let's see if Dev Jam is the bad. No, I've just been listening to <laughs> if Dev Jam I've just been listening bad. to a lot of hip hop. Yeah, so good day. I've just been listening to a lot of hip hop music, that's all. Oh, okay. I'm listening to West Side Gone, Rum Streets. Shout out to Conductor Williams. That's what I've just been listening to. Osage don't, really Osage, good, uh, Osage don't fall you? off. Osage don't fall off. The one Osage just said it now. Oh, I've just been listening to a lot of rap music. You think maybe he's just tired listening to. When are you not listening to rap music, hip hop music? <laughs> but you know, actually, but you know, actually, you, you, you don't fall off. Because what? What are these names you are calling? Earlier this, earlier this morning, when you on your, when you call, you were jamming JT. I'm like, ah, what did you do? I, I was surprised. Justin like, Timberlake, right? What's that happening? Is Osage, uh, is Osage fine? Osage was just jam. Oh, you, you never heard the call that time. He was jamming JT and he was singing. He was having a nice time. I'm like, ah. I just keep quiet. I want to start talking. I'm like, let me just leave him. It's middle mid- mid- crisis around that, that area. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so first of all, first of all, first things first. Okay. Ayo, I know you sold okay. out, but because you sold out doesn't mean you then you have to put some respect on some people's names. You have to put some respect on Griselda. You know my problem with Griselda. Griselda. Just you know my problem with Griselda. Yeah. I know they're talented. What's the problem? They're cool. You can't give me track one. But they're doing well. You, no, of course they'll do well. But you can't give me track one. I'm selling drugs. Track two, I'm selling drugs. <laughs> track three, how many come on? Diverse this is all the problem with them and Pusha. How many drugs do I want to say? How about Well, it's a it's it's called it's a it's a is a is a subgenre of hip hop. I know, but me do you understand me, I don't like, I'm tired. It's like how people used to is it is it is it theme? Yeah. See, bro, theme. Once you yeah. saw the cocaine, you saw them all. There's mm-hmm. no story again you can tell. There's there's no story. They should try and branch out, please. Nah, this no, these guys have stories for this. So shout out to Griselda. Um and then you pray for me. The West Saigon album is dope. Pray for Paris, the one before was dope. Like I was telling Steve, I just got into like this, their producer, Conductor Williams. He also produced for Drake on the on the um for all my for uh, for my dogs. What was the name of the album? He produced on that one. Then the Scary Hours 3 he also produced the record. I think you were the one playing the record now. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Um, I was doing something, yeah. Yeah, and then the name tag came in Conductor, you know, and I was just giving Steve like the genesis of how he got his name tag and all that, you know. Yeah, just enjoy myself. Steve, what can I do? I can just enjoy music, you know. My, my, the only problem I have with you going on a rabbit hole of all these producers is like you are taking valuable time of when you are like tell me what you will do better thing you don't use and you go do. <laughs> I know you have spent like two three hours on that thing. That's the only problem I have with this thing now. Yeah, but <laughs> because at this age, yeah. two three hours is a, a lot, is a, is, a, is, is a leisure. Like it's, it's not is a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. Uh, to be fun, to be honest, and oh, that's why okay. I have like two screens. You know, I'm doing that, but I'm also doing work. Yeah. yeah. So I was actually rendering exactly some stuff. like. Exactly, like I, I, like I was telling you guys now, like I'm, 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 I'm not at home. I'm in a hotel right now. I still carry my screen. I know they Steve, use Steve, screen Steve, play. elaborate. <laughs> I can't Steve, actually see it in front of my computer. Elaborate, because Insta block we carry it in or just lover. We don't popular now. Elaborate. Say yes. yeah, hotel. Say person free. Say person flew me out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so I'm on a walk you. trip. And Thank I'm in you. a hotel. I'm yes. in a hotel. And I, I carried my second yeah. from my house. You, because according to you, it's a walk trip. We yeah, are not seeing trip. there are no indices. No, no, it's not according. That is a walk trip. <laughs> it's just, it's just it's walk trip. As a man, you have to, to declare everybody. where you are at all times. Thank you. Yeah, it's a work trip. It's a work trip. It's a work trip. I carried my second screen. I can't I can't even see just sitting in front of my computer and just staring at just one screen. I can't I can't do anything meaningful. You know. Yeah, okay. I, have to, I have to be watching an interview or something, something, you mm-hmm. know. As you do walk, as you do jab, something is on the screen, right? The, I loved, I enjoyed the Mikel Obi, uh interview. Yeah, it was good. I, re- I really enjoyed it. Yeah. Ferdinand has, Ferdinand, that Ferdinand 5 media, they've had some amazing interviews. Yeah. I remember no, the, the Boston one is the best. Yeah. Mikel now, they've had some really, 
Yeah, the Boteng one was really insane. No, that Boteng um, one was that Boteng yeah. one was because Boteng is a, it's really, a, it's a really good storyteller. Yeah, he can talk. That's how express himself. Yeah, he's a story. He's a, he's a very he's a fantastic storyteller. He knows how to elaborate incidents, yeah, stuff like that. He's also and I love his, yeah, the, his, all that. Yeah, that's true. That is that's true. You know, you just know he's a hip hop guy. Like he, yeah. he's, he's he's like he's hip hop. His culture. Yeah. You know? He's got your interest. Mikel is also Mikel is also good at telling silly. stories. Mikel is also no Mikel is actually into yeah yeah yeah. 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 Is but Boateng knew how like to America, stretch the story. Think about it. Boateng knew when to hold yeah. the punchline. Boateng mm-hmm. knew when to you know hit you yeah. with the with the funny thing. Like he really he has one liners. Yeah. Yes. yeah 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 yeah. Mikel said he didn't try. Yeah. You know it, come. You have to, if you consider where both of them come from, you know, you know, like yeah, and yeah, I actually, and, you know, and, and, and yeah, you, understand. you know, they're not even outspoken. Yeah. Mikel has been able to uh, work exactly. on his, Mikel's Mikel has been, yeah. his intuition, something that like Mikel going to Chelsea at a very young age, being a metropolitan city like London, he was able to absorb the culture mm-hmm. and, you know, it shows, it shows on him right now. Yeah. Yeah. You can, yeah. you can definitely tell that the culture rubbed off on him. Definitely. See, at the end of the day, right, we've all interviewed people here, and the best set of people to interview are the people who, the great, in, the people who are great interviewees, right? Mm-hmm. People who can tell stories, people who do not lose their train of thought, yeah. people who you can have that communication with and guide them through the story, mm-hmm. right? It's, they are the best set of people to interview. They know how to guide the story. They can do the timeline if you want the timeline, you know, and all that. Yeah. You know? Those are the kind of people you want to interview. Who has been who has been some of your best interviewees? Mm. Now that you've mentioned it, and he was trending this week, Idi Kavasa. Oh, was good. Idi Kavasa was really Adi good. Was good. Adi Kavasa was good. Idi Kavasa was so good on loose talk. Was, was so good. good on loose talk. I remember. Adi I remember we were trying to rush him. It was like no. no. Idi Kavasa is. Thank you. He was no. Thank you, you very much. Idi Kavasa yeah. was good. Kesolo was a good one. <laughs> Kesolo was a good one. Kesolo yeah, was, was good. Kesolo was a good one because. Osagi, let me sh- Osagi, let me shock let you. Me sh- <laughs> let me shock you. He, Osagi, he has so many backstories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was too much. <laughs> At some point, I stood off. I couldn't take it anymore. It's Kesolo. <laughs> no, Kesolo is good. Kesolo, yeah. Kesolo knows. Kesolo, yeah, Kesolo he's, a, he's a showman. He's a showman. Yeah, Kesolo is good. good. He's a showman. You know who's good? Too? Arika, Arika yeah. Basa on too is good. Who? Yeah. Uh, Obi Asika. Who? Arika Obi Asika. Oh man, it will be a sicker oh, start like good. this. Oh my lord, obviously, guys. Obi, first of all, obviously, guys. Uh, uh, yeah, you've interviewed him several times now. I think one of your interviews was um, the big the big brother interview, yes. yes. Then also, this something like is is written, is it is it text, yeah. Like, and also, the one you do with Spotify, also, like when he finished, the Spotify mm. guys were like, Oh, well, thank you for giving us Obi that this he really knows what he's talking about, like he's the OG yeah. man, that's I, the triple OG. Why? No, 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 do you know why? Do you know why Obi Asika is still relevant to today? Do you know why? Why? Because he's embraced culture as culture changes he as an old head. Bro, he knows the Obi- artist Obi- now. Obi is coming from the nineties. It's true. Eighties. You understand? Actually. Obi Asika is coming from the nineties yeah. or the eighties, right? And never for once has he acted like an old head. Like, nah, we don't. I don't fuck with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah he doesn't yeah. do that. He's always abs- I agree. absorbed it. He's always embraced it, and that's why till today he's relevant. Very. Once you. You, I agree. You, you know why I like, agree? Yeah. Him, why? him having, sorry, him having that show, the interview show in 2015, right? Let me know that. No, you're talking about, uh, you're talking about Lisa. Who, like, who really That's what Lisa you're talking about. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. That's Lisa. That's Lisa. That's Lisa. That's Lisa. That's Lisa. That's that's Lisa. But yeah, but, but, but same, cut from the same cloth. They are bred, they're part, the same bro, cloth. they've been they're partners yeah, for years, for decades. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Cut from the same cloth. That's same true, thing with Olisa too. Culture. You have to always embrace culture. True, true. You know, so you don't feel like a sound like an older. Look at Steve Stout up till today. You know, he's been around since when. But you see him in the forefront of things. So at the end of the day, that's what you really need. You need people yeah. who can really embrace that culture, no matter the age. And they become ageless. Yeah, you become because ageless. Because you don't now start saying, uh, yeah, look at Ayo now. <laughs> Look at Ayo. Ayo is meant to. Uh, I'm, no, I'm well, for real, man. Yeah, yeah it's true. Your pairs oh, that sound like old heads. Yeah, that's, that's, that's snob. You know, that snob at and yeah. raise their noses at oh, these new people, these new culture. No, but Ayo, you like, have to be there. This is the culture. Yeah, you have to be there. Yeah, yeah. you have to know the latest artist too, and you have to know that this is another generation, and it's that is is their own. They have their own champions, so don't be going everywhere and be saying. 
Don't be going everywhere and be saying, oh, two face, you know, doing time two face did his own. Mm-mm. My guy, two face don't do your own. They have their own new stars now. I think this ideology also even was what also made, you know, pause at the time like very, very popping because even while we are still there, we're just looking at like who, who are like the young, the next guys, right? And even Osagi's hires at that time were really reflective of how he was thinking, bringing in like really super young guys, like people who were younger, who had more fire than us, the Shergons or something. And that's how you really, you drive the culture, culture, whatever culture you are building in any organization, you know, that's how you drive it. They're always looking for the next guys, the next guys. That's how you keep building, you know, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the way I saw it back then was the way, you know, my OG also taught me, right? He also looked at it like, you have to get, like, no matter how much in tune you want to be in culture, right? No matter how, like, fam, we're culture here, like, we know what the culture is, right? Like, we know straight up, whether it's, like, anything that has to do, like, entertainment, media, and all that. We're in the forefront, like, mentally, we know what's happening. Nevertheless, you still need young people who will bring some perspectives that you can see. And you have to be humble enough to understand that you can't have the perspective of the now. Especially if you're not in the, you know, you're not in the trenches. And when I mean trenches now, I don't mean it like the way trenches has been used. I mean, if you're not in the forefront of what is happening in culture. So what an 18-year-old or a 20-year-old right now is experiencing for the first time, the kind of energy that is moving around that person and that is different from us. We're in the back office now. And that's why, you know, like they always say, old men for counsel, young men for war. So that's how I always saw it back then as well. Like, okay, we were getting old. We're getting into our, like, 30s. We're, like, like late 20s, early 30s. We need the 18, 19, 20, 22-year-olds. Remember, uh, 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 what's his name? It's not Shupo. Yeah, Shupo. The intern. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shupo. The intern. Shupo, Shupo, the intern. Yeah. 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 You that's understand? True. Young boy, just. That's true. He was from, super young. I think super he finished young. from Babcock or something. was like 17. Bro, come in. Yeah. Get in the office. You know, and he was the youngest kid. You one know? of the guys I loved, one of the young guys I loved the most was the judge. Because I loved the. His, the judges, I've never seen a first day energy as the judge in my life. Crazy. First day energy. First day energy. <laughs> first day energy. The judge was saying, This is what I don't like about this company, this pause. This is one thing I think we can do. First, first day. Ah, <laughs> uh, more. First day. I've never seen that energy. I, I don't go lie. You even see today. Because, you know, so there's an unborn period where you're just, tre- you know, you're just. Looking at the mood of the company, mm-hmm. the culture, they're trying to see how to talk. No, 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 no. This guy came in first day. <laughs> said he had a note. Osagi so sat down in front of him and he was telling Osagi, "This is what I don't like. The video formats, I don't think I like it." This Osagi was saying, "Good, good, good." I like this is it, man. This is yeah. It. I really is, appreciated that. Yeah, I do too. I do too. And yeah, his combination with Shagun was crazy. Like they didn't fulfill what they wanted to do because the company wasn't going in that direction right but true like what they did the small the impact they had with the kind of short format long format stories yeah. under ios guidance come on man fuck it yeah. and i'm look at look at what both it's of true, them went true. on to do look at shagun went on to work at maven yeah. after working at bbc and zikoko true. you know and and you know he's yeah. he's working at more corporate places now and all that look at you know and jaji too went on to do his own thing so man i'm just happy that you know we built something with people and mo- most especially there was there was money to do it yeah <laughs> I think, that was the I think that's like most important yeah, yeah there was money to do it yeah. Yeah, that's why that's why i don't joke with that company because yeah yeah they, there was money you yeah, know they, they, at the end of the month boom there. salary came in and you know everybody you know the, we know how much we were earning was we eating. 25th yeah. you know say 25th you don't need to look accountant anyhow he's coming don't worry <laughs> you know and you, we, we all know like the growth that we witnessed there financially and just you know just like as people as well so it's not like building and investing in young people you know and i will continue to do so there's nothing yeah, till yeah. i die just continue that's to build true. the young people because see this and, young that, and that's why if you, if you guys notice mm-hmm. the most passionate i am about any topic here is something that involves young, yeah, yeah. young guys right mm-hmm because we made a lot of mistakes when we were growing up. We didn't f- see a lot of guardians. We people we, we, we watched a lot of people via like social media. And we didn't get one-on-ones, yeah. right? For the game. So I don't like, I don't want young guys to make that mistake. I want people to 
be 25 and they've had like a lot of you know headway in terms of what they are doing right mm -hmm. you know so that's why i'm most like i'm mostly passionate about that any topic that revolves like that revolves around like young people yeah that's right young boys yeah yeah shout out shout out shout out to your how's your week so we know steve's week was good because he ended up in a hotel right now so steve's week was good <laughs> Don't put it like that. Don't put, no, 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 no. Saying, don't do, don't, don't, don't do this. I'm not saying anything. I'm me. just saying your don't week was great enough don't. for you to end up as a... Ayo, 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 how did that sound? Ayo, how did that sound? When you heard Osage say that... Please rephrase that, your words, please. We are... <laughs> yeah, I beg. Osage, please rephrase your words, please. please I've said what it. I said. It's gone. Please please okay, it. it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> said what I said. Shout out to Jolan. No, I want zero. Yeah, I want zero, I want zero. Ayo has a red curtain in his background and I strongly and we've not seen this background so again we're recording virtually as you guys know I have a motive. and um, I have a motive. I, we've not seen this background from hold on okay. now let me don't interrupt okay. sorry don't interrupt okay. when i was breaking down steve's when i broke it down mm. so this is a new background for maya and it's a red curtain and steve and i have some you know we have some ideas where this young man can be yeah, we have some theories yeah yeah because yeah yeah, yeah. i all comes do, from a very yeah, Ayo comes from a strong Christian background. <laughs> so I know for sure. Do you understand? That you don't fuck with red. His house, don't fuck with red. I know that Ayo's house, they cannot yeah. be red. I know. Yeah, they, can't fuck with, they, don't, they don't Christian fuck with red background. at all. Yes. So me personally, I know say Ayo, if they install cutting, Ayo you know will install red. Because in okay. mom, see if you come greet her, family member, if you come greet her, if you say Ayo, did they see yeah. red in Hawala? So Ayo, who has this red? Are you red? Red. Osage, are you red? Is red. It, are you red? Is the same thing with um cocaine. Cocaine. <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> oh, cocaine. <laughs> Osage. <laughs> I don't want to mention the first name so that you won't get it. And it's my and it's, and it's, my, before and the it's my and it's my homie. See, it's my homie. And it's also this guy. Yeah, it's also this guy. Interview of the decade, my nigga. Till today, interview. I, I swear, bro. I swear. Nobody has put out that interview before in their lives. Is there a, is there a greater interview? Yes, now. Is it documentary? Yes, now. Yes. Is it documentary yes, on his own? Yes. It is actually. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> okay. So are you All back right. to your red curtain? Uh, I'm doing some interior decorating. Right, so the main curtain has gone. So this is the replacement curtain. <laughs> oh, this is the temporary uh, curtain. Yes. Okay. Be lying, be lying no, for us. I don't know what cards now. All right, man. Let's get into this farming real quick. Let's get into this farming real quick. Shout out to everybody. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope your week was swell. Started a new week. New week, new you. Like you've been deceiving yourself all year. <laughs> new week, new you. That Coursera course, they've charged you again. You have not still completed it. That's how you are pressing people's new next. Week, new you. you are pressing people's next. You know, hey, those goals you wanted to smash, have you smashed them? For those who have smashed them, shout out to you. For you that you said you wanted to be journaling, Osage, no more Osage, journaling, what's the going on? thing is that there's life. There is life. <laughs> and when there's life, there's what? There's hope. Uh -huh. There's life, there's hope. Yeah. And when there's hope, what? You just keep moving. Let's get into this fan mail. This is Guy from Toronto. Um, and this is your Find Your Tribe fan feedback. I won't pretend to be a super fan. I don't have a favorite episode or memories of every discussion. But you've been a big part of my life since the very beginning. I listened to every episode since the SoundCloud days. I wish I had the vision then to download them all. Similarly, my hard drive is full of all kinds of bangers of every genre since as early as the late 90s, early 2000s. I was, I'm a huge music head. Is there a way I can release this without getting sued? No, there isn't. Do not take people's intellectual property and put them on the internet. <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right. Um, something for the culture. I digress. But i um, been wanting to write in for a while, but never really knew what to say. Finally, you guys touched on two topics through the email write-ups that hit home, close to home. I can now add value. Forgive me if you can't sense my excitement. I'll try to keep it brief. <laughs> Context. He didn't keep it brief. On the real estate email, 
property values in Nigeria, where Steve gave his inputs, the demand supply fundamentals are just one part of valuations. The real estate capital market is also another missing piece. It's not yet as developed in Nigeria, but it's predominant in the Western world and other more developed markets in Africa, like South Africa. As a background, the industry is generally inefficient and full of assumptions. So you're assuming what rent sales price will be in the long term. Problem is no one is sharing this information or at the very least not being truthful. You need the information to be able to price your property accordingly. Relating this back to the capital markets, if you're trying to value sell your property and you're trying to look for comparable trades, so if you you're trying to look for comparable trades. So if you have a property that is similar in characteristics to what you have and it has been recently traded for X amount of dollars, right? Um, and you have some terminology, a PSM or X amount of dollars PSF or X amount of dollars DOR or whatever metric is being used, that sends a signal to the capital markets about the state of the industry. And as such, based on the demand and supply fundamentals Steve mentioned, adding other factors like the state of the economy, housing policies, you can then make more accurate assumptions like a quarterly or annual basis. I think prices will be up or down by X percent. If the real estate capital market was more developed in Nigeria, I believe it would do a better job for regulating property prices. Only a matter of time until it gets there and I'm excited to see how that journey unfolds. Thank you so much for this breakdown. I think... Uh, Again, like we said, the 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 real estate market, capital market is not developed here. So you literally can sell like on the same streets, right? High value streets. You can sell price. You can like sell a piece of land or a property, right, for X amount, and still on the same streets, you can sell another piece of property for something that is valued way higher or way lower. Like sometimes you have some ranges, right? But at times, or you have some range, but at times. You can't even just pinpoint what amount you can sell a, a, a you know property. I don't know if you've Steve, you've done some some deals with people before. I'm sure. What what, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I, the thing is that I don't have experience with um, like high value like properties or stuff like that. Like mm -hmm. the only thing I have, um, the only experience I have with real estate is. Like is my is my town like Asaba, ball like stuff like that. But the only thing I the reason I talked about location was because I've had experiences of where, you know, someone will buy a land in an area that's not moving, right? Um, mm -hmm. Then the land like two, three, four years later is almost the same price that you bought it, right? But I've seen the case also where you buy a land in a place where, like in Agbon yeah. now, the that Mefile building, that Mefile building that trended one time, right? The houses around there, like the lands around there are really moving fast. And, you know, there's a lot of profits with people who bought it like four, three years ago. You know, so that's why I made the the examples of like the location determining the price of, you know, real estate. You know, that's what just yeah and the little yeah. experience I have. Yeah, I'm not a real estate developer or real estate businessman. So my, my knowledge is very, very limited. Thank you very much. Um, so moving on in the email, on the young computer engineer who moved to Canada at 17, I just want to offer my advice and say to him, brother, you're not alone and be kind to yourself. I've been where you are. A lot of people have been where you are and a lot more people will be where you are. Subtle jab at the recent immigrants who arrive and won't let the internet rest. <laughs> <laughs> my apologies again. I digress. Like you, I moved to Canada at 17. While all my friends and family were UK people, I was sent to Canada. And at the beginning, I felt alone and out of touch of my comfort zone. Also, Canada wasn't really on the radar with Nigerians or Africans as everyone wanted to, wanted the US and UK. So you couldn't really feel connected to the scene. Shout out to Giddy Lounge and NotJustOK.com for the early efforts. Big shout out to NotJustOK.com. That connection between like nigeria and the diaspora right yeah a lot of people put in a lot of effort there and it was largely driven by two things right remittance yeah. and um trade and of course trade but you know from a more cultural perspective it was also driven by entertainment and largely was music yeah. right so platforms sure. like notjustok.com 
did a lot of work in branding Nigerian music and taking it from Nigeria to the world. This thing we call Afrobeats to the world today was mostly engineered by like these music blogs, blogs and not just okay, you're gonna come was like in the forefront of things. Um, Giddy Bro, Lounge not, for not, me, not, not just okay, drop became like people were putting the drop on their own on their music. Like, no, you could hear it in movies, I heard it in yeah. movies. That's how mad it was yeah. at the time, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bro, artists were mm-hmm. performing, and you would hear the audio tag of not just okay.com, it was that big. Now, Giddy Lounge, right? Well, not just okay.com was like you know, a blog, music blog, you could get music there, and that was yeah. it, right? Giddy Lounge was more of like a radio station, online radio station. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you something, right? Shout out to Olumide and the guys that run, you know, Giddy Lounge. Some of the most amazing people I've 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 seen dedicated to driving African culture and Nigerian culture. Yeah. Oh my you know about right. it's a trend every Remember, night. Remember um, no rubber, the show, no rubber. Um Benny Bing had his own show. Um, I remember I remember I was managing overdose at the time. We had to stay back at my office because we wanted because we needed good internet and power, right? And because we wanted to do we wanted to be on one of their shows that used to run around 2 a.m. at night. Mm-hmm. And these their shows used to have mad engagement on Twitter because everybody was listening, right? And you just go to yeah, the yeah, lounge and you can just yeah. listen to music. Yeah. Man, fam, people don't walk, oh, people don't walk, go. Oh. See, the people that put this thing they call African music on their back. That's why I don't want to hear any all, single man. artist say, I did it on my own. You didn't do it on your own. You were fed into an ecosystem that people built with their bare hands. At all, if man. that ecosystem didn't exist, you wouldn't even have a platform to put your music out. It is because of the efforts of all these people, right? International platforms now said, oh, you know what? I think there's something happening over here. Let's just jump into here. People need to understand that it was a lot of blood. It was blood and passion, man. Based on passion. Who did mostly most of these things for free? Don't forget, you know. So shout out to Giddy Lounge and not just the key, but I digress. To make it worse, unlike you as well, Nigeria happened to my family, and so I had to work during the exam and off term to cover my upkeep. Again. All of this was not unique to me. So many other people were in the same boat. And with that, we built our community. We held, up, uh, other, we held each other up in so many ways, throwing events, spending holidays together, playing sports, hanging out, etc. My advice to you, just like the title of the last pod, of the pod um, Find Your Tribe, people in similar situation backgrounds carry each other together on this life journey. It might be a long phase, it might be a short one, but go with people who share similar values with. I understand you're a computer engineer now. If you're in Waterloo, Omo, I get it. If you know, you know. But trust your journey. Trust the process. I'm not saying ignore your friends back home and just focus on the grind. You're definitely allowed to have your emotions and moments and go through it all. Just don't forget why you and your parents made all the, these sacrifices. Your friends should... Your friends whom should understand when you are coming from, where you are coming from, and try to support you. If they don't, then you have to be intentional about the company you keep. 14 years later, I left. I have three degrees, two undergrads and a master's, gathering tons of work experience in my field and dual citizenship. My friend group in Nigeria now say, it be like say, Nami get vision when I left earlier. They see me reaping the fruits of my labor now, but they didn't see all the hard work that was put into it to get here. Yeah, on the, um, you are on the same path, and you will also get to your destination. Happy to be a resource to you if you like. Feel free to reach out to the hosts for my email. Pro tip from experience. Keep on listening to this podcast, and you'll get through these days. Definitely did for me. Finally, to the host. Ayo, thank you for upholding the culture. In thank, your you own thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. When Steve and Osage yeah. took their temporary hiatus. Damn. Damn. 
Uh, I was so, never, I was never a pop culture. I was, I was never a music guy. You, I was never. I was always a sport guy. <laughs> one you guys, time, you guys can't forget. Just, what time did you just report? Always, I was. I was never the pop culture guy. I beg. <laughs> <laughs> It was only a saga that ran. Oh, me, I don't run. I was never in there. Uh-huh. <laughs> Osagi, thank you for coming back to your first love. I think keeping the group alive and pushing every giant to be the best version of themselves. Last but not least, Steve, your life journey continues to be an inspiration to me, and I know everyone around you. I encourage you guys to continue giving back, sharing your stories. I'm making it. I'm making time for yep, this. Yep, yep. May history be kind to you all. Guy from Toronto. Shout out to Guy from Toronto. Yeah, guy from Toronto. So kind is a word. So I want to say that the guy, that guy that he was referring to, reached out to me also on Instagram. And for a while, oh, nice. I, uh, for a while, I didn't know how to respond. Like, I didn't know like what to tell him, right? So I've been trying to like gather my thoughts. And I could say this guy did uh, did a very, very good job. Um, with his advice to that guy, right? And I think, finally, I think I have something to say to that guy, right? Look at everything that you've sacrificed to be where you are today. No matter what you want to do tomorrow, the phone that you want to catch, always ask yourself, before you take any action, always ask yourself, am I going, is this action going to jeopardize the sacrifice that I've made in the last six, seven years? Answer that question very, very honestly with yourself. If it doesn't, go ahead. But if it does, kindly Take a step back and move in another direction. That's all. Just think about the sacrifices that you've made in the last seven years, you know, and think about what you, how your next action is going to affect it. That's all. Thank you very much, brother Steve. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our own very one, one and only Holy Police. Thank you very much. <laughs> all right. This next mail is from <laughs> the same Uti. This next mail is from Uti. Um, Uti says. Waiting with it, I don't think Uti Wanchuku would be writing to Loose Talk. Okay, okay, okay. No I mean, he might listen. I don't know. You know, you know, yeah. Um, so this is Uti. Uti says, Dear Giants, hope you all are well. I'll go straight to the point. I like a straight shooter. I'll go straight to the point. You get a lot of young guys who are doing amazing stuff so early in life right to the pod. But that's because, in my opinion, that's how the situation the country has now put us in now. Our parents simply cannot support when we get to a certain point. When I was in uni, almost everyone and their own mother was running some kind of business. I have a lot of friends who started out their careers while they were still in school. In fact, in pop, in, in one particular level, I had roommates who were one, a producer, two, a producer engineer, three, a fashion designer, four, an artist. Even I got my first job when I was 19. So that's why I really hate this nonsense banter about my generation, about at- our attitude to work, and how we will say stuff like, oh, I left this company because they were giving, they were not giving. Rubbish. We have to battle a lot of BS that Nigeria throws everyone daily which now apparently includes randomly arresting scores of innocent students minding their business. I'm not vouching for anyone, of course. They are many stupid people. Common sense is not a generational gift. Just look at our leaders. Thanks for listening to my rant. Stay blessed. I, I feel this young man. I, and I see where he's coming from. And he has a lot of... And he, <laughs> he, I just hate everyone. Nigeria, Nigeria hates first of all, hates everybody, first yeah. of all. The country, is not, the country is not set up for young. Nigeria is not set up for young people. <laughs> no, I think Nigeria, Nigeria, Nigeria hates not, yeah, Nigeria from hates time youths. to time, yeah. Nigeria, like, reminds people why they hate their youth. You know, the most important yeah. thing you can yeah. give, like, young people, right, is, is chance, opportunity. Like, like that opportunity, you know how, I'm telling you, something as little as a boot camp can change somebody's life. A random boot camp. It can just spark sure. something in someone's head. I'm telling you, yeah. there's yeah. a boot camp I did on radio production. And today, like, we're running podcasts, right? We, I did a boot camp on radio production in 2010. And Chrissy Idero, right, in collaboration with 
it was a school, I think it was yeah. Portsmouth, Portsmouth College or something. A collaboration with, we used Amaka Igwe Studio. And Chris Idero was our teacher. Shout out to Chris Idero. He, he was our teacher. And, you know, they grouped us in, pro, in, 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 in fives or fours. And we all had a story to tell. And it had to be a five-minute production. And ours was like a story of, I think I've told this story before on this podcast. Ours was like um, the life of an agro. And we went to Joe Elegba to interview an agro. And, we, you know, he gave us the whole thing, the breakdown of how it works, how the money he needs to remit. The guy works from 7 to 11 every day, 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. That's his shift, right? And we were there when they came to collect the money from him. We went to the NYRTW office and they did the whole breakdown and everything. And we put this in a five-minute radio production and i remember that day you know we had to go into scripting this this that that and with my own you know um background in because i used to be a recording engineer right in the studio my own background in like all of that i just told them everybody just give me the audio because they were, were like struggling to do it and everything i was like just give me the audio and i produced everything on my laptop and you know we 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 got a really good project people played the project they played the audio the five minutes audio and I remember like people clapping when they heard it. And what that thing did is it planted something in my head that one day I would love to do more of this. I would love to do more storytelling like this. I think this journalism thing is actually where I should focus my life in. Because before then I was not doing anything. I think I was just blogging. And I was just, you know, I was just blogging, man. But that kind of shaped the direction in which I will then eventually go towards. So, while our government should be doing stuff like this, and you know, that's why I'm happy with what the Ministry of um, Technology is doing now with the 3 MTT, right? Giving young people opportunities. And I know people are saying, hey, uh, even if you learn tech skills, you know, that's not still going to help. It's better than nothing. It's people need to understand I, that. I don't like that comment. That's why I've never shared that comment in the group. I, I, don't, I don't like it. You get yeah. It, me too. I will never give young people opportunity. If you can teach one kid, one kid software engineering skills, another kid web development, you've not only changed that person's life, you have changed that person's family's life. Bro, I know people that studied software engineering right now eh, that were able to that provide for their family, their whole family. One person now takes care of a family of seven. Yeah. I don't know if you get my point because he now gets paid in FX because he's working remotely. So let them be doing that. Let them be training people. And we need to do that to more young people now. Move away from just technology. Move away from like tech skills or data science, whatever. Move away from all of that. Move into other things. Vocation. You know, as, as the minister of IT is doing that, what's the minister of labor doing? What's the minister of the other people doing? What are the other ministers doing? That's Thank how you. it's supposed to be. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You are getting it. Do you understand? Because for every soft skills we have, right? Or like every online skill we have, where are the other skill sets? Who are we training? You know? So, Nigeria does not like his youths. Not only do we don't train them or provide opportunities for them, now we arrest them. We arrest, do you understand? We shoot them. We arrest them. Look at the look at what happened in uh, the university with the FCC. Look at mm. that thing that happened. I could, I could, I could tell you that the reason yeah. why they why they charged the eleven people they charged with crime was because of the backlash that came. May look like say everybody welcome. Yeah. We don't see anything they hold them. We we'll just hold this eleven. Do you understand? Yeah, yeah, it's it's the, the, that's, yeah, that's that's just how fucked up it is, you know. Um, and you know, talking <laughs> about what Osage just said, I want to like move a little out of it in terms of like people not understanding, not having what Osage is saying is true. And like this, this, these things, like whatever it is, conferences, whatever it is that you're organizing for people, like this radio podcast and um, this radio um, cause that he said he undertook with uh, Chris Endero as a mentor, right? These things are very important. And that's why me, I always advocate, I always advise, you know, everyone around me, I always ask them, what courses are you taking? Because what I understand about courses is that it gives you a lot of options, right? 
in terms of like where am i going next in my career it opens your brain up to the possibilities of a career do you understand like you might be learning something maybe for example you are mm-hmm. a coder right now it's like oh, what do i do where do i move on what do i do in the next four or five years right why undertaking a course and going through those courses you start seeing the possibilities, you start seeing other areas opening up. You say, oh, do you know I can be this, I can be that. That's why I always, information is hmm. so important, you know. So when I see hmm. young people comfortable not seeking information, just going by the day, going to work, come back, or their salary, it's not healthy. It's not going to, it's, it's not going to pay you at all. Always seek for information. Even if it's a free course on YouTube, just take it. On LinkedIn, learning, take anything, just take it. It opens you up for like a lot of opportunities and in terms of your thought process, you know, yeah. So what Osage is saying is true. Information is so important, and that's why you know he made he gave an example with the radio course that he went to with Chris and there. And I'll tell you, uh, a lot of people are in a state. I talk yeah. to a lot of young people, and a lot of young people are in a state of limbo, so they haven't decided, you know, which direction they want to go to yet, you know, and. So they don't know which direction they want to go to. They are just like moving in circles and trying to get busy, but they don't really know what they want to do because they've not figured it out. Because again, our educational system does not drive that, does not help you, does not encourage that. You know, from a young age, you're not, you've not figured out what you want to do. You've not even figured out, oh, I'm really good at sports. Maybe I should start sports. But you know, from a young age, you've not started. So you're already late in the game. True that. If you're going to be a great footballer, you start playing football from four. Four, yeah. So that the technique can be inbuilt. Now, it's second nature to you. From four. Steve knows what I'm talking about. Because it's second nature. You, you, you don't think about it. You by, just by do 10 it. years old, the routine of turning the ball when a player is coming, you already understand it. When you, when you, when you see those players where, when you see those footballers where, when they hold the ball, it's like a glue. It's like their feet. Bro, it's like not talent. It's, it's, been <laughs> been it's been not been talent. Too. They've been doing that thing since they were four. So they mm-hmm. have a relationship with the ball. It's like when you see basketballers with great handles, right? It's not, and it's not magic. It's, they just have a relationship with the ball <laughs> because they've been doing it for a long time. Not only do it's they have great, not only mm-hmm. do they have great technique, they know what to do. They know when to drop a short pass, a long pass, to pass back, yeah, because they've been in, they've played the game so much. They've been in situations, so they understand. It. And Bro, they've starting early. The coaches have drilled it into them that oh, more you see three Bro. people in front of you. This is what you have to do. This is what you do. But us, Bella Kazi once said this. Bella Kazi once told me this. Right, we we're having a conversation. He once told me he said anytime he sees, and I agree. Anytime he sees a Nigerian footballer born and born and brought up in Nigeria, playing at a high level in the in the top five leagues, he mm. considers it a miracle. That guy is world true. class now. Like world we, class. We find in the is a miracle. Yes, now. What time the best? Yeah, is a miracle. What time the best DM in the league, bro? <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> exactly. Then talk like, of playing for you, you, you are of You are competing with people who have been doing this their whole lives. This guy just started doing it. These guys were doing it at the age of ten. Why they were still hawking <laughs> or doing other things? Do you understand? Mm-hmm. That's the miracle. Like, it's a miracle. People like Kano. Because we don't get to start doing things early. Yeah, people like Kano. Marcus Kocha, Rashford has know. been in, has been a yeah, man yeah. united since he was maybe 10. Bro, has been in the system yeah. since like one seven years. Yeah. Yeah, young before. Yeah, before, before 10, you were like seven or six. You Arsenal said he be at the age of six. At the age of six. An institution like Arsenal. You know him. what? Guess what now? If you have a kid then, <laughs> and you just, you know what? Steve Asagi, if you have a kid then, and your kid is playing for his school, just local school, every Sunday or every Saturday. Scouts from all the biggest clubs in Manchester, I mean, all the biggest in England, they're already there they watching. Your league. They're Come coming. Watch you know. they're already watching. They are not yeah. playing. Because they know they're that, they've already told themselves that, oh, the next four editions of the World Cup, the fourth one, we have to be in the mm-hmm. final. So they're already looking for mm-hmm. world beaters already. But we, we will come two months, uh, let's go back to the drawing board. Meanwhile, you are only one whole set, five <laughs> games. You are only there five games, not play them. You not told them to do Miracle Queen group in first round. You are joking now. So, yeah, man. if you're there's a young no, person listening no, to this no there, and man. seek information, see, seek information, any way you all. want to. Like I told you, I, I I don't know if I said it on this on this podcast. When I wanted to transition out of media into marketing, I would go to Invent Bright. I would first of all. 
I said it on this. Yeah, yeah you, I did. You, you, you told us so now. You gave fine. us a full you breakdown. To, yeah. You have to be deliberate you about your yeah, future. Yeah, yeah, Nobody's yeah. coming to save you. Your parents have done the best thing by what? By just raising you. They've tried. Guess what? Yeah. Young, no, lady, you go young school, lady yeah. listening. Your parents are still figuring shit out. This is their first lap of life. Just like your own first lap of life. This is mm-hmm. the first time your parents then has, not has reached code. the age they've reached. No, be cheat code. They are also figuring it out. Now you've joined mm-hmm. the figuring it out stage. So start figuring it out. You can't say easy. That's, how, that's, that's mm-hmm. it. That's it, man. That's it. Let's get into this one. Okay, this is from Ami Ara. And it's, the headline is Appreciation Mill. Listen, guys. Words can't explain how grateful I am for this podcast. I've been holding back this writing or from writing to you guys. But after the last episode, Find Your Tribe, I must. I said I must write. Um, the podcast has really changed the way I think. Anytime I try to have conversations with my peers about self-development and investing, they really don't pay attention. Also, it feels kind of weird because I think I may... Uh, I, I, I think maybe we're still young for those kind of discussions. I'm 20, by the way. My brother, 20, you're not young anymore. It's 20 in Nigeria that looks young because 30 years old, you still there your mama house. 20, you are not young anymore. <laughs> let, me, let me explain it to you. 20 years old is not young you're anymore. You're not telling you. If you said you are 15, I will understand. Yes, you are 20, you are not young anymore. You're a global citizen. Anything above it. You're a global citizen. Mm-hmm. My brother or my sister. 20 is not young in any way anymore. Just try and understand. So those people, if they are not understanding, go and find a new tribe that will understand. Toronkocha. I use God beg you. And I'll give myself as an example, Right? When I was young, I used to be passionate about a lot of things, music, whatever. And I used to come and like, I used to have friends, you know, and then I'll try and explain it to them and everything. And they used to look at me like I was fucking weird. Right. And these people were in high sites. They were basic as fuck. But those were the people that were my friends, you know, going into uni too. Those are the circle of people. And I'll come and try and explain a few things and, you know, very interesting things that I stumbled on the internet or whatever. And these people used to make me look like I was weird. But guess what? My weirdness took me to where I am. And once in a while, I'll see them on LinkedIn and I'll tell you for a fact, they ain't shit. And it's no no biggie to them. I'm just saying. And that's fine. They found their tribe and they were together. (laughs) Now me go to find tribe, we'll not be my tribe. The lost tribe. And and I started meeting people that <laughs> I now started connecting with better. And I, when I tell or discuss those things, they also had like great ideas and they brought those things, you know, and all that. So at times, some people consider you weird. That's fine. Let it just ginger you. Till today, I still chat about a few things, and some people just say, "What do they talk now?" That's fine. In fact, that even reminds me and spoils me. I say, "Oh, this weirdness is what brought me here," and you are still condemning it. Okay, it means I'm on the right path. So, please, let's get back to it. I'm 20, by the way. No be flex, so you don't want to make a yarn you now. Make no be like, I know yarn you. Anyways, this has made me distance myself from them, correct? Anytime we link, it's always gossip and waste of time. There's no time. Bro, the most important thing is not money. I'll tell you. I'm in my late 30s now. I'll tell you. The most important thing is not money. It's time. Bro. I do some work now. I'm racing against time. There's no time anymore. It's time that we're fighting now. No money anymore. It's time. So I love how you are saying this. Thank God it was this podcast I threw the joke. Thank God that it was this, pod- this this episode I threw the joke of you using two hours to <laughs> go on a rabbit hole of a producer, right? <laughs> I, we don't have that time anymore. You, we, is this, you understand? You know this podcast, we just said it. Guess what? <laughs> Guess what? I watch, sorry, I watch yeah. Oppenheimer this week. Mm-hmm. I know it's three hours. It took me like three times to watch it because I don't have the time to sit down and uh, watch a three hour movie anymore. It's not just possible. I've done two, I've done 30, 20 minutes of Oppenheimer. 
I'll do after this <laughs> after this recording. I'll do a, maybe probably another fifteen that's minutes. That's the intro. Sleep. That's Tomorrow intro. I'll do maybe ten minutes, bro. I yeah. can't watch it straight. It's impossible. Now, will, Twenty-four hours. My in body will be moving somehow. My body it's will be moving somehow. <laughs> and he says, "Where my head is now, eh? no space for unnecessary hangouts and gossip. I got admission to study nursing. Congratulations. That's what I love to hear. Session starts January. I'm I'm recently taking still, Google still. Analytics course on Coursera, and every day I they ask myself, waiting at the do since three years where I finished secondary school, bro. That's See, <laughs> when when I actively started doing Coursera in twenty was mm-hmm. it twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen? Yeah, that's the question I asked myself. Where was yeah. I the last five yeah. years of my life? Where was it? Was a journey. Was so well, let me just say journey. this. Yeah. I remember for what for mm-hmm. teaching me how to do for what teaching me how to do uh, what they call it the poor people now. For, uh, poor poor country, uh, can't afford Coursera. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about, but you don't. Boys use that thing. Boys use that thing. I use Amu. I use Amu. You understand? So, but I'll tell you something divine. Like you mentioned, or like like I always say, right? The best time to have planted a tree is 20 years ago. The next best time is now. And you started already. And that's the most important thing. I would love to work in the entertainment media space. The school I'll be attending is still a new school. I hope to start something like a radio station, school radio station, where I can get there. But I don't know how. Start a podcast. Please assist if you if you can on any idea of what I can do about the entertainment media or even media in general in a school that's just two years in. I live in Abakaliki, Ebony State. The school too, just for context. Bro, it's very simple. Start a podcast and interview people. Just interview everybody that you know. Sit them down. Ask them, ask them 10 Chicken questions. Up. The podcast lasts for 20 minutes. Be consistent about it. That's all. Like Sip says... The internet rewards consistency. Just be consistent. That's it. 10 questions. That's the name of your podcast. 10 questions. Meet anybody. Sit them down. Ask them 10 questions. That's it. Just be consistent with it. And, you know, you'll be rewarded for consistency. Again, big shout out to Steve Dede. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Once, you, once, you've, been, once you've, been, you've been able to build... Once you've been able to build that habit of producing content, right? Maybe you've done it for a year in terms of like a podcast. You can just one day start Googling and say, how do, how do I even form a radio station? It's not really that expensive. I can tell you. I can tell you that it's not really a big deal. A radio station is not a big deal. It's just having a, a station, a frequency where people around your locality can just dial in on a radio and listen to you. It's not a big deal. But you can't open a radio station now and after you produce one content, you come the next two week and to produce another one. No, you understand me? You have to have a, a repertoire. You have to have like a, a catalog that you'll be giving to people who are listening to your radio station. So the first step is not a radio station. The first step is to have to have that, con- to build that consistency. Know how to produce content. Know how to produce the format that will work for people. If you don't start it, you won't, you won't understand the format that, you know, that people will love. You know, to build a successful radio station. So the first thing is not a radio station, podcast, mm-hmm. YouTube shows, whatever it is, just do it. Absolutely, absolutely. It, you know. Again, big shout out to Steve Dede, the real lead researcher. Steve keep dropping nuggets on the podcast. I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. Being aggressive and violent when there's nothing threatening no, your so- life or well-being should never sh- shows you've never been in a real situation before. That's so you're pussy and a coward. Those words have stuck with me since then. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no, Stevie. I, yes, but it's Tita. I just saw one boy on Big Brother. He was, I saw one guy on Big Brother just shouting. He was acting with a beep. He was just shouting, shouting. He was just being aggressive. I said, This one, this one. I think we're guess. going to open a segment on this podcast <laughs> called Steve's Tweets. Because I, every time I stumble on Steve's Tweets, and <laughs> Steve just has to, I'm just like, What the fuck? It is always funny. Is that not funny or just. You know, I love I love the tweets. We're gonna we're gonna do that, and every episode we just read one tweet from Steve, and it can be an old tweet, can be a new tweet. Nana, please take notes. Let's do this. Okay. Um, shout out to Osage and Ayo. You guys have really impacted my life positively. Your words have helped me keep myself in check. I've tried to put my boys on this podcast and other podcasts so we can learn from. I post it on my status and even in the group, but I don't know if they listen to them or just ignore. I will still, 
I'm still trying to find myself, my strengths, my weaknesses. I'm also working on my self-awareness. I love that for you, bro. Um, before I do a lot of talking, but when I fi- before I do a lot of talking, but when I find myself in real life situations, I start palpitating and overreacting. Later, once I remember that what Steve said, I start to feel ashamed. You guys don't know the cultural impact this podcast has on young men like me. You should continue doing the work and doing the good work. Then go see cultural impacts. Then go back. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. In terms of <laughs> like, in terms of like speaking, um, then speaking in real life situations, I think a way you can always just train yourself is speak to yourself every day in the mirror. See, there's this thing called like, um, it's, you know, what's the name of that book? Um, uh, uh, Atomic, uh, what's that book called? I've forgotten. Atomic Habits. Thank you, Atomic Habits, right? And all you need to do is just put like micro increments on everything you do every day. You are not going to turn out perfect every day. You're not going to be a good orator every day, right? But you have to do it small by small and get better by, by you know, at, at the end of the day. So what you can do is write a statement, print a statement, tell that chat GPT to, to um, tell that chat GPT, go to chat GPT and say, hi, chat GPT. I am not really good at public speaking. Develop a statement that I will read my, to myself in the mirror every day. Get that statement, put it on your phone, and every day, read it to yourself. Every day, the same statement. Every day, read it to yourself. Take your time, take your time, take your time, and then you get better at it. You know, it's practice. It's just practice. Everything is practice. You know, some things you're not going to be great at, but you'll be good at it because you practice. It's like, see... A great example is Cristiano Ronaldo. Fam, when this guy came in to Man U in 2004, if I remember, at the end of the 2003-2004 season, after Bex left, I remember I was in like SS3 then, yeah. so I was writing Wyek. That's when Ronaldo joined, because Ronaldo joined the year before Rooney, right? I used to just be like mad at the guy. The guy yeah, didn't cross the ball. You know what Anthony is doing now, that we are all mad at Anthony? Ronaldo was doing something similar. But I think his only just a bit better because he was just confusing defenders. But like to cross the ball, my guy could not cross the ball. <laughs> you know, it was very frustrating. And this is, you know, my U fans coming from David Beckham. We one cross, don't enter post. I'm sorry, don't knock ball enter. To so this guy who's just dancing around with the ball, dancing around like samba, and cannot cross the fucking ball. I used to be very frustrated. But guess what? He continued to work on himself. Another player is Darren Fletcher. See, I almost left Man U and went to Real Madrid in the 2001-2002 season that Arsenal won. That guy was, was fucking annoying. My mother was looking at me. <laughs> fucking yeah, annoying. I was saying, what's your boss going on? Are you okay? And I was just like, this fucking Darren Fletcher, I'm tired of this club. Darren Fletcher went on to become one of the most important players in that United squad and became a machine. He became, bro, he became a combination of Michael <laughs> Carrick and Paul Scholes at one time. Darren Fletcher was throwing balls across the field and everybody yeah. was scared. That, ah, Darren Fletcher. He became, do you understand? So, it's hard work. It's commitment. You have to continue. Every day you have to show up. If you are learning any new course, whether you're learning, and the guys who learn like software engineering, whatever, they'll tell you, you have to practice every day. Practice, 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 practice. I'm taking on a new challenge now. When I started, the thing was like, it was frustrating for me. But like every day now, I like I get better at it, right? So again, it's just a race against time. Just practice. A shout out to you. Um, this is from Shagun. Shagun says, Dear Usagi Alunga, the lead host. I'm not the lead host. We are three hosts here. They don't pay me for this thing. If it's not lead host, where they pay by now? I say, okay, yes, I could claim the lead host. My name will come, just be. Just be. <laughs> Um, Steve, they did the lead researcher. Now, people like this guy, they collect titles. You understand? We, we know they collect titles. We know they do all these titles or something. I'll, 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 I'll take, I'll take, I'll, I'll <laughs> take it. That's, take I'm it. the lead researcher. I'll take um, it. Just I'll take it. You, go, you go do card, lead researcher. Office of the lead researcher. Something went day Twitter by already in a card. Nah, no yeah. <laughs> just a typical Nigerian. And I omitted title, the lead writer. <laughs> and the entire... 
And the entire no. Loose Talk podcast team, I just want to take a moment to thank you guys for your fantastic podcast, Loose Talk. It has become an integral part of my weekly routine, and I eagerly look forward to each new episode. I was introduced to your podcast through mentions on 234 Essential. Is our work. Yeah. That's the only that's the only thing. That this is this is the first time I'm hearing that two, three, four essential is uh, happy now. Steve, please, we need you on the podcast. I'm Thank trying. you. That's all. That's Steve, all when I'm are saying. you going on two, three, four? Speak to my manager now. My, my you don't get manager. I'm his manager. Oh, my manager, manager calls me. I've been on two, three, four essential before now. No, those side no, no, I've been on two, three, four essential before. Not those we we one with our official guests. We'll go we go do poster for you and everything. Uh, hey. I'm his manager. I'm his manager. I'm either I'm either Steve's manager or, or his wife is his manager. <laughs> one poster. of both. No, let's do this week. Let's do let's do this week. And I'm sure he will choose his wife to be his manager. <laughs> of course, <laughs> he will choose his wife to be his manager. I forgot. <laughs> the reason why I'll choose it because I was now you go give me money, money past my wife. My wife, I will not see the money. Don't play. They will bully me out of the money. <laughs> no, you will learn. Yeah, don't play. Okay, he says, um, I'll introduce, introduce um to your podcast through mentions on two three four essential with recommendations from Ugochi, the original Ibo Stallion. Shout out to Ugochi. And ever since I've been following your reboots from the very beginning, looking back at some of your old clips on YouTube. I can see the growth in you guys, especially Osage, who seemed to have more fire back then and is now mellow. I just saw one particular clip with Osage defending EOT2 against MI and could not believe it was the same Osage on the, on the same show. How have I changed now? I've not changed. I mean, I'm going to stop with this narrative. I want to comment on female rappers in the in, in Nigeria episode. Niyori, in particular, seems to be a promising talent back then. And I can't help but wonder why she didn't achieve great recognition. All right, if you guys don't remember Niore, Niore used to be like a reggae dancehall artist that was signed to Nigerian Ninjas. As a matter of fact, she was the only female artist at the time signed to Nigerian Ninjas. And Nigerian Ninjas, of course, comprised of Babadi, San Sultan, um, Niore, who was like, like the Nigerian Ninjas 2.0 era. Um, then they later had like... Um, Kamar, um, Shantizu, um, Young Gracie, Young Gracie, and what's the name of the tall rapper? Ah, uh, God, that's Kamar, right? There was another guy that used to do dancehall as well. So yeah, um, but after, you know, interesting thing, it was Niyori that discovered Whiskey, and well, not discovered Whiskey, but it was Niyori that introduced Whiskey to Usagi. And then with Osage's relationship mm. with EME, does introduce Whiskey to EME. Yeah. Oh, too much. So shout out to Niori, yeah. man. Um, to my surprise, I delved it delved a deeper into the story of Niori. I discovered that the very article that I read in the past and decided to search again was written by Osage Alunge. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how writers are completely ignored unless there is a reason to know about them because back then i wouldn't have bothered to check the writer but now because i know osage i know of osage the, the name the name right the, i know of osage the name the writer's name got my attention anyway the article was the headline exclusive whiskey that manager Osagi Osarenho a part ways shed light on a pivotal moment in whiskey's career and how Niori played a significant role in connecting whiskey with his manager Osagi Osarenho just talked about that wow so it's possible that without Niori there would have been not been whiskey we know of today and by extension Davido and Bonaboy maybe not the extension but I get your point before I wrap up as before i wrap up as a gunner i would like to remind the lead researcher who should know better than that between 1998 and 2017 arsenal qualified for the EFL champions league for an astonishing 19 consecutive seasons don't let me remind you about the unbeaten run arsene wenger is one of the best who built a small team without big money to become the most feared team in Europe at the time. 
thank you all again for the exceptional work. What was I doing? What was I doing? What was I doing? now. Thank you once again for the exceptional work on Loose Talk Podcast. Keep up the fantastic work. Regards, Shegun. And here are you. You can come with the Gunnar Slander. I'm sorry. You said he, he said he took a small team. Arsenal is one of the most prestigious, prestigious teams in England. Where did Arsenal become a small team? Shegun. He took a small team to, to this team. Are you joking? This, you started watching football 2005. That's your problem. Shegun. You okay. what you... When you have time, you call yeah. me. I can give you three hours on a winger. What are you joking three about? Three hours. What do you mean? Time no day, but I get three hours three to give you on a They feared Arsenal. Feared, they feared Arsenal in me. Most feared for you. For who, feared? Feared? who feared? Who feared? Who feared? Who feared Arsenal? No vex. No vex. And where's Steve goes? Steve off camera, sir. Yeah. Steve, your camera is awful. I think he did yeah, it on purpose. Now, nah, Mike, I won't off. No vex. No vex. No vex, I beg. All right, I and the view is so nice, and you guys are not paying for it. So, which view? I'm, I could go off my camera. Which view? I'm sure we're real for now. <laughs> yeah, right. my guy said view. <laughs> view. He said the view is so nice. We are not a real estate agent. Oh, God, the view is very nice. So, if you see the place, it's, uh, you, it's, it's near Dangote in the refinery. <laughs> uh, you're not <already> dead. <laughs> The street is not tired. Light is not there. Flood. Like, what do you think I want to stay close to a refinery? Why? Why, Why do I want to stay close to a sound right. Health reasons. Health for health reasons. Why would I want to stay near a refinery? That's why it doesn't even say that. The flaring and glaring and everything. I'm Why do I want to stay close to a refinery? Mad people. <laughs> so, there's this, so there's this guy on... So there's this guy on TikTok. <laughs> this country is... There's this guy on TikTok. He's going, very, he's going to go viral very soon. His name is Snag Inspector. What he does is that he goes to all these um, houses that are to rent, that you people want to rent and stuff, and he inspects them, and he points out the faults in each apartment or in each house. And trust me, bro, we know they build out for Lagos. Now, what British people they do for Lagos? Mm. He looks at the staircase, looks at the entrance, looks at the finishing, looks at everything, and I say, my guy, I give this house an F+. Plus. And that's what the guy does on Twitter. He go, I don't know where he studied, but the guy knows that his work very it, well. Yeah. If you want they to go and rent house, please just go and look at that guy. They go soon use Bro, he went to a church. He went to a church and broke down all the bad, wrong things in that church. Wow. I'm like, fam, this guy is, this guy is they mad, they yeah. Put, they go soon use police arrest and bullying. Uh-uh. You will go no to hard, man. You will go enter the wrong house one day. You will go to one property developer who the CEO is as mad as that guy that runs, that that produces that thing tomato. <laughs> they, will, they will use police to carry the guy. When they lock, oh. when they lock you up, you go review. You go review the cell. You review what is wrong in the cell. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, this is from this is from Sonny. Sonny says, "Greeting the giants." That's this is Codex, and just finished listening to the Find Your Tribe. It's like this Find Your Tribe episode really touched uh, touched people. Who, yeah, a lot of people. The, Pause. Yeah, pause that. Yeah, you see people that are pausing me. I'm not. I, do, I know they do all this pause, 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 pause. pause. So. Big, 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 big. Anyways, um, I I just listened to the Find the Tried episode and really found value from your thoughts. I'm currently in my mid twenties and I get all the concepts of the power of of the prove your worth narrative comes from. Two points I took was the concept of appreciating friends and loving yourself. As regards youngsters going for buddies, you see that that just sounds wrong. Youngsters going for bodies. It sounds see in the context. Youngsters going for bodies. Someone's car almost got blown up. <laughs> do, you, do you understand? I I beg I, I please Nana delete my laugh. Nana delete my laugh. I beg you for God. <laughs> I know it's really it's very good blown now. I beg delete my laugh. I beg car blown mm. up. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, it sounds wrong. That's what happens. Youngsters going for bodies, right? I feel it's delusion. Mm-hmm. I know somebody. I know somebody. Who, I know somebody who got his eyes blown off. To today, that guy is blind for looking at the wrong woman. As a youngster going for a body, for looking at the wrong woman, then you are not going for a body. <laughs> you <laughs> die. You be castrated. <laughs> when you can't do anything again, you Anyways, count down. As regards youngsters going for bodies, I feel it's delusional. Cause for anyone who sees the virtue in themselves. 
certain categories should be should not be your priority. See, and Codex, God will continue to bless you there. Codex, you never see the answer. Codex, you never see the answer. Go on, boo you. Codex, you see the answer. Go on, boo you. All this philosophy where they talk. <laughs> Jesus is a wise man. Jesus fled from temptation. Now they use philosophy. Wrong. Wrong. He says, don't get me wrong. I do love the bodies and I have them as friends, but I try to keep it simple <laughs> with them. It the them also. On your deep and posting them on your stories do drag eyeballs. And also, my algorithm don't favor mediocre contents. So I don't see anything that will make me feel uneasy about my life. See this guy, I feel this guy. Me, I feel him. That being said, but you have them as friends. That being said, okay. the last writer who studied abroad is just a gem, and it be it would be nice to have such people, and uh, to to have such people have a sense of community, which I'd like to discuss if that can be possible. Blue stock fan page or something. My close remarks is this podcast is not for bubblegum individuals, so don't stress it. To the state of things in Nigeria, evil happens when the good men, when the good men act. Oh, sorry. Evil happens even when the good men act. It will take a generational detox to make sense, power submissive to justice, then people who understand the term of consequence to action. I greet O oh, boss or oh, sass. Guys, do not call me O oh, sass. Don't call me O oh, sass, please. Help. My brother, if you shot in Osage, now sass, forget that level. I don't know why they try fight this thing. Smoke we check him now, yo. Yes, no. Osage, no be Osa. Now from the same uniform prefix, <laughs> Osa. So it's Osags. Or at the same level. I don't understand why so, the guy won the form lyrics. In Osags, Pussy. My brother, Help forget that level. Like, Help me greet the other Osags. boss, AOT. It's AOT2. AOT9, Papa. In a AOT2. I beg. <laughs> <laughs> AOT, don't forget it too. It's very important. I remind people almost every day. Help me tap the other. Help me. Every help day. Me tap the other guy. Tell and say I agree to lead researcher. Love and lights. I do feel this guy. I do feel this guy. His headline is fan meal with the with the My emoji. God. You know what? How yeah. the Italians do. That's his fan meal. You now put that emoji. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, man. Do we do we have do we have energy for one more fan meal? These fan meals have been interesting. I love them. I love them. Yeah, let's let's do okay. one more. Okay, and we have Axi Giants. Oh, um, uh, this Axi Giants is looking crazy, man. Anyways, let's do one more. This is the shy boy. This one is very short. Hello, bosses. I appreciate you guys for all you're doing. I always look forward to each episode. I have an issue. I'm a very shy person, and I hate talking to people. When I decide to talk to people, I find it hard expressing myself. This issue has even has even affected the free relations I have relationship I have with people. For instance, maybe I chat with someone. When next I see the person, if the person doesn't make the first move to say hello, I probably won't speak with the person. I even dodge people when I see them in order not to speak to them. This has affected me in school. Oh geez, how can I express myself better? And also I don't I and I also want to stop being shy. Hmm. This is a very interesting one i'll leave it to you guys first what do you guys think are you exactly let's start with ayo because this is a let's start with issue. he doesn't have and, and let me get let me, Ayo, let's let me start with you let's start with you wait, 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 can you explain wait, can wait, you explain wait. no 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 because i feel a an agenda <laughs> is about to be and i was about to be thrown here <laughs> <laughs> you know what is counter attack? No, no, I is always different. Have you seen two, is two different. to one counter attack? Like, is different. Okay. Yes. I might not make the first well, move. I is not shy. I might not make the first move, but when you when you know him, I is not shy. I is not shy. I is not shy. I'm I'm not, I'm I'm not, I understand what he's saying. I'm reserved. There's a difference. I is reserved. I is not shy. When I your joint falls. When I your joint falls, this is when I join Pulse, right? I your join like the next month or like the next two months, right? I think there was like a month gap. I joined in August. You joined in like September, right? I joined like late September or early October. First okay. week in October. Yeah, I remember, those two. you know, and all that. And I'd given her the heads up. I say, hey, man, I'm joining this place. You're coming to be a sharpshooter. Yeah, you're like a shooter. You're one of you know, like I was, you know, a sniper. And true, and I, I didn't know I was going to take it literally. 
and he like literally came to the office. I was not talking to anybody. <laughs> like a true sniper, I just kept quiet all day. I was only talking to him in the office. And I started becoming worried by like week two, week three. Like, the fuck is wrong with this guy? He's not even interacting with anybody. I just oh to work. He doesn't say anything. He does his work. Bam, bam, bam. You understand? And at, at the time, right, Paul didn't have like the um, I mean, everybody grew up, grew to become like really good like writers, but at the time they were like junior writers, most of them, right? But I was like a senior. I just came in, boom, 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 like four articles in a day, and they would read this thing, and all these things was like quality with context with everything, and he wouldn't just say shit, and he would just go back again. I think there was a bus taking everybody home. I just sit in the bus, touching his phone, doing anything, listening to whatever, just comes again, comes to meet me, sorry, how far X Y Z X Y Z. Like people were looking forward to hearing I was speak. That's how crazy it was, Steve. Before you joined, <laughs> we came like a sniper, full on sniper. <laughs> I had to call her one day and say, "Is everything okay? Is it you are, are people like in the office threatening you?" Say, "Say no, I'm just okay." I'm like, and this went on for months. <laughs> You know, yeah. and then at times, you know, like years later, you then see how you're cracking jokes, everybody <laughs> laughing together, and I'm like, this nigga, when this young man came in the office. So that's why I'm putting it to you. <laughs> Do you understand? Um, Do you understand now? So please advise yeah, yeah. this young man. This young man is genuinely shy and can't interact with people. What is person's what is person's age? He's a young is he's younger. It probably, yeah, yeah. He's a guy based off the name. Um yeah, it's probably yeah, uh, one. One, he has to go out a lot and socialize a lot. So that's the only way that can ha- that can happen, that can help him. I, I feel that's the best way he can do that. And you know. Don't feel conscious. The world is not... Not everybody's looking at you. Nobody's looking at you. Nobody's thinking about you. So do what you have to do to be, boost your self-confidence. If you have to wake up and repeat mantras that will help you, you know, encourage yourself to go out. Go out more. Go to social settings more. Uh, initiate discussions. You know, uh, initiate uh, you know, speaking also. Also, if your line of work or wherever you are encourages you to do public speaking or there's any avenue for you to do public speaking, also do public speaking because that is the highest form of you know, like for shy people, they can't handle that. So you have to just go out and just do a lot of public speaking, but you have to work on yourself and it stems from self-confidence at, at the end of the day. So I, um, I, a cheat code is to dress well. If you dress well, you'll be confident. I'm sure if you dress well and you're confident, you'll be looking for people to talk to by force so that they can see you that you're dressed well. You know, so just make sure that you dress well, you know, to, um, clean your clean your apartment, clean your room so that your thoughts can be organized properly before you go out into the day. And Small, little by little, you get that confidence you're looking for. Thank you very much, Ayo. One thing I would say before Steve comes in is look for volunteer jobs. Look for volunteer works to do, right? And join communities. So whatever you're doing, whatever field of work you're doing, whether you have a community, it can be your church community, it can be your local community, it can be a community around maybe your if you're a student or if you're working, whatever it is, like join a community and become a volunteer there, Right? Um, volunteering is like really key, but also be very conscious of where you're volunteering, right? Where you can meet people and, you know, you have to, because when you volunteer, right, in communities, you have to talk to people <laughs> because you have to set agendas. You have to have like pre-meetings and yeah. all that. And then you get to meet people and talk to people. And then people get to know you and are also comfortable to speak with you. So that's what I'll say. Steve? Yeah, man. Um, I think it's a confidence issue. Um I think it's a confidence issue. Um, I don't think um, it should. Um, it just comes from like just thinking less of yourself, or maybe thinking that you are not up to the level that people are. You know, if you think like that, and uh, maybe you have genuine reasons to think like that, then there's a a huge case for you. There's a there's no better case for you to for self development. Think about just list out your areas of weakness and try to work on them. Um, I think once you once you start gaining more confidence, you'll be able to like talk to people and have conversations. You know, um, I, I think it's a confidence issue. And and let me tell you, confidence 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 issue comes from you thinking a lot of people like many people ahead of you or stuff like that. So Everybody is figuring shit out. You are figuring shit out yourself. So have confidence. Yeah, <laughs> have confidence in yourself. You know, work on yourself and just you know, the sky is just. Starting. Yeah, shout out to you. Yeah, all right, let's you. get into this topic. We st- so first of all, I want to say shout out to everybody that sent the fan mail as usual. I appreciate you guys. We have a backlog. We're clearing the backlog. Every episode, we get to read like three or four fan mails. But please keep writing, and we'll definitely get to you guys. 
Okay, let's get into the order of the day. What's on the docket? Mikelo B interview. I finished the interview today. I just want to say I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the stories. I enjoyed which one of the, the interviews with um, Rio Ferdinand? So um, five, five, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. five. I don't know what they call it. Five. Mm-hmm. Vibe five, vibe five. Vibe I know he has five. his own podcast now called um, the Obi One, yeah. Obi One, which is a brilliant name, by the way. Do you understand? Obi One, Obi One yeah. podcast. Yeah, okay. A lot of Nigerians will understand it, but okay. <laughs> moving on. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, to the Star Wars, Star Wars reference. <laughs> um, yeah, so I watched the one with with Will Ferdinand. Yeah. You know, great questions, great stories. I didn't know Conte like did that to Mikel Obi. I had no idea. That's what happened. Come on now. I'm not content in like ministries you know ministries we did you know ministries we did off it at pause. Conte told him if you go to the Olympics, you're not going yeah. to play for this for for, for yeah. Chelsea again. Straight you on. know, so shout out, shout out to Mikel Lubi. Mm. So something he touched on in the podcast was black tax. Black tax being, you know, people mostly your family, right? Or relatives, yeah. um constantly and consistently requesting for financial assistance, right? And you you know, being compelled to help out. Um, if you are African listening to this podcast, you already know what black tax is. Once you reach a level of financial stability, right? People from your family or close relatives or even friends, you know, then impose, sort of impose the rights um, to always receive some sort of financial assistance from you on a consistent basis. And, Black tax is very dangerous. I tell people, right? So you do all this to then pay it backwards instead of paying it forward, right? You find out in the space of like 10 years, in a decade, you've sent money, you've, you've, you've invested money into other people than even building your own family or building your children's family. Some people haven't set up educational trust funds or any sort of trust funds from their family, but they spend more money taking care of their parents or their family and relatives. Now, I'm not in the... I'm not I'm not going to be, you know, a moral compass to say what is right or what is wrong. However, I do want to say that it is not anybody's rights, right, to forcefully or to think that it is in their rights to request for money every time someone somebody in their family reaches some sort of financial stability. Right? I think personally that's what I think. I don't think, like personally, I didn't do that shit. Do you understand? Like I have family members who were, do you understand? Like I have family yeah. members who were <laughs> well-to-do. I have family yeah. members who could have engineered, you know, me leaving the country or my brother leaving the country, right? To so say, okay, come and school over here. We'll take care of you for this amount of time. Then from there you pick up and then you can, you know, and all that. And same. Fam, same yeah. I think early I on in life, fun. I just yeah. realized that, you are on this earth. You are on this earth for you. <laughs> and so I didn't soak. I didn't feel bad. On you your own, man. And oh, I think own. that just gave me more energy and like clarity. Not clarity. It gave me more energy and pump to go and get mine, right? And take care of mine. You understand? Yeah. But I think yeah. from what we saw on social media, right? There's yeah. a huge divide in how people think about these things. And I was certainly, Bro. yeah, man. I was, I was shocked man, that's to see shocking. people lay claim to another man's money. <laughs> I swear, another man swear. I was, I, I, swear. I was personally <laughs> shocked. The nev, the, the nev and F one tree. Even as a man, I don't you feel some some sort of shame when you're acting another person. You're backing another person for for your family's upkeep, and, and you do the first time, you do the second time, you do the third time, and when he doesn't want to give you money, you're not threatening by saying oh you're going to the press that was terrible now uh the, the one of the things that shocked me the most was the reaction um over michael abuse comments that people even had a problem with what he said you know um, about you know how his family wanted to use lean on me to to, to press him <laughs> um it just, it just goes to show um, how we think a lot of people think um while I understand the the benefits of black tax on of how 
especially if you come from a community and you are opportune to like be a breakout star that you have a kind of a responsibility to set up a system to kind of like lift others into your into your level and um, i also think that's that two ways you can go about it you have the absolute right to choose how you want to do it and follow that program that for that way strictly right and if you are not if they don't allow you to do it that way you also you also have every right to just ignore everybody and move on with your life and also number two i go back to like finding your tribe because it's only your tribe that can understand the level with which you are trying to uplift them right if for example i'm, I'm taking myself an example like not even myself an example you can't lift somebody who's not thinking on the same level with you into a greater part because the person is also confined this person's thought is confined with the like in within his own his his own environment and you know stuff like that so that's where the difficulty comes in but i just feel you have a right to decide how you want to help people and if they don't agree you also have a right to just move on and just and just leave everybody and just focus on yourself you know Yep, 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 yep. I get your point. I think, you know, I think it's well established that if you do reach some sort of financial stability, it, you know, you should be able to take care of family if it doesn't cost you. Like, I think the problem is for how long? I think yeah. it should be more about empowering, right? And setting people up. And people some people don't want to be empowered. But some people see you as a new ticket. Yeah. 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 Just take, take, take. I also believe right. that family if you if you if you focus on just family you are you are it doesn't paint the full picture because a lot of people grew up hmm. without that um a lot of family ties right a lot of people are tied to hmm. who maybe their schoolmates or the friends they made after school like stuff like that hmm. and there are people who I know who have had you know you don't necessarily even need to have money but like three of us here I know that, you know, each and every one of us have used whatever we have to try to, like, bring other people in. Do you understand? Like, Osagi has recommended me for... Osagi has hired me twice in my life, right? Personally. I've, he has recommended me for a job, like, stuff like that. That is using your own resources, right? And your own kind of, like, privilege to help another person. That's 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 a kind of, like, t black tax. I don't know how to put it. It, must not, it. it doesn't have to be, like, monetary, right? That's how I see it. Mm. A lot of people didn't grow up with that whole family. I didn't. I didn't grow up like that. Like I don't. I don't. There's nobody I'm giving money for my family. Like, I don't. I don't mm -hmm. have anybody like that. You know. So it's my immediate community. The guy who repairs my generator. The guy who's growing up on my streets. Who's like really. Who I know cannot afford to register for YA, and I'm giving him money or jam or stuff like that. Yeah. You know. That's just how I think about it. You know. It doesn't necessarily have to be yeah. tied to family. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think I think th those ones are like that's fine, you know, that's fine, that's okay. I think what yeah. really sparked it was, and from Mikhail's point of view, was those who just want to keep taking and yeah, don't yeah, want to yeah, build yeah, anything yeah. off it. I feel like I should receive a salary from you because you are just rich. Because. Yeah, I am entitled yeah. to that money because you are, Chelsea, that money. you are a Chelsea player, and you, yeah. and you make 140,000 140, pounds per week. And if you give us the salary. Yes, and if you give us forty thousand pounds, when you come, it won't affect you. Mm -hmm. But do you know? So, do you know how much like as, as an African, where everybody knows your salary? It's everybody all over knows now. how much you are earning. Yeah. It's all over. Everybody now. knows that <laughs> this today you are receiving a lot. <laughs> God. Shout out to Fabrizio. Now Fabrizio costs an. I go pay your salary for for Twitter. It's all over now. Oh, <laughs> it's everywhere. It's on transformarket.com. It's, it's everywhere. on transformarket. Yeah. It's, all in, it's, all on, think, it's all on complete sports. It's everywhere. Yeah, I mean, that's crazy. They kidnapped his dad twice. Twice. Sorry, I wish that was a kidnap. Twice. Sorry, I wish that was a kidnap. That's, that's I mean, the thing. In, in, in retrospect, now, right? In, in yeah, retrospect, are you sure? Bro? Yes, no. <laughs> that's one yeah, when uh, Abramovich yeah. asked him, Do you want me to send men from Russia to come take care of it? The guy said, No, 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 no. If he be if he be in Tana issue, I beg, I beg, he's gonna beg you. <laughs> because you don't send people from the Wagner group. Russia group, they don't ask a lot of 
They don't ask a lot. They don't ask a lot of questions. They just get to work. No, no, no. Is this yeah? Do 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 do. Finish. I don't want to. It's gone. Like Biggie oh, said, God, squeeze God, first, God, ask God, questions God. last. Africa is so big. is so big, bro. So you know, so people defending it, you know, saying yes, he has the money. Why shouldn't he be able to take care of his family? I really don't know where what subset of people those are. Are those the people that are also affected by black tax and fail to do it and can't complain, or are they the parasites? Because they have to yeah. be one of both. You know. You know, I don't I don't subscribe to it though. I think people should if you can help, help. If you can empower, empower. But like when people then think, Oh, I am going to you know, I need everything from you and I'm not going to do anything and I'm going to end up in trouble or any amount of money you give me, I'm just gonna blow it. Or like you said, you keep having kids, life. you keep having kids you can't cater for. Why? That's that one, 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 that that one, 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 that Somebody said him and his we wife went on, on went to vacation, went to like travel abroad or something. I think they went to Spain. They posted a photo. He said one of his uncle responded on Facebook and said, "You people are enjoying what we are suffering in the village." <laughs> <laughs> That's what somebody commented on Facebook. Do not add your Facebook. Sure, go off Facebook. Do not add your fam- extended oh. family members on any social media. <laughs> Meet at family meeting. Meet at family meeting. This is why some people just like reach financial some sort of financial stability and they just ghost everybody they disappear yes this thing you talked about uh, i think he influenced mikhail's mikhail's lifestyle because if you look at mikhail mikhail has detached himself from nigeria in terms of he yep. doesn't come here like even even like he's oh. even like in the last 10 years he doesn't come to nigeria for like summer breaks like you, Mikel, Mikel lives like a Europe, like a, like a European. Like he doesn't have, yeah, he does. he doesn't. You see him from Super Eagles camp. You see other Super Eagles player from camp, like looking for time. Like even if he days a day to like go home, go to like like where they grew up or something, just to go. You know they go anywhere. Back to Mikel, Mikel is going straight from Super Eagles camp to to airport. To go back to I get anybody time like. You know, because uh, if you look at I think, my brother, yeah. if they kidnap you, if they kidnap your father twice in a country, do you feel attached They'll try to, to that kidnap country? you? Yeah, it's true. You won't. It's true. I agree. No, you just feel like I did all this it's for true. my country. Like I lost yeah. my position in my football club Bro. because of you, people. Bro, the second kidnap, he had a game for uh, like this. That was just before we played Argentina in the world in the world. Yeah, we know that one. That's the popular we, one. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, where we had to draw to qualify to the next round. They kidnapped him. Probably. Yeah, and he played his ass off that day. He played his ass off. And he, and he, he had a really good game. He had a good game. I enjoyed. Yeah. Mika had a good game. Yeah. You know, so, so you know, you 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 look at stuff like that and you're just like, wow. Yeah. Wow. It's it's, it's painful. Stuff. It's painful. And that's why, and also that's why, like I just talked about it, that's why people like leave, right? And I don't blame anybody that's, that makes it out of here, just leaves. You have to, at times you have to leave. I'll tell you, I left my hood now. Once I started yeah, making yeah, some yeah. small money, I left. And yeah, I, didn't, yeah. I didn't even leave because people were t- taxing me, to be very honest. That's not why I left because yeah. they didn't even know I was making money. I just yeah. left because nobody was willing like a lot of my friends and people i knew they were not willing to grow mm-hmm. yeah they weren't because i kept telling them hey man it's possible this can happen why don't we do this why don't you do that look at what i'm doing you know they were very comfortable being who they were and it yeah. was very basic and it was not yeah. that wasn't inspiring to me and i wanted something yeah. more and they were very comfortable see let me tell you, growing up, Fuad put like a whole thread out and, and all that. Yeah, and I read his thread, that. right? And yeah. you saw the thread. And, you know, growing up in, beyond even what Fuad said, is what you said, actually, Steve. Your environment yeah. is very important. It's because very your environment raises you more than your parents. 100%. Yeah. Your environment raises you more than your parents. 
you spend more yeah. time in your environment than even with your parents. Because even oh, when you are in your yeah. parents, you are in your environment. It's the environment that influences everything. Yeah. And yeah. if your environment it constitutes of people who have a certain type of reasoning, it's hard for you to get out of that to break out of that his, reasoning yeah. block. Because yeah. community thinking and group thinking, in as much as we don't like it on social media, it helps and it works. When people have a joint or have a uniform or have a a sort of reasoning that they've all decided upon. And that's why people love churches because people can congregate there and they have one true, you know, they, they, they have like one true mission and everybody walks yeah. towards that it's mission that achieves that vision, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Oh, in this community, what we do is we empower young people. Once you've reached yeah. a certain age, there's a fund that we all donate, and then we can donate to that person. Oh, in this community, yeah. we have lobbied with this local government that children in this place will receive a certain fund to attend some certain schools. Oh, in yeah. this community, we every year, we ensure that five students can make it to private school. The yes. best five students. You know, there are things True. like that. that some communities True. just come together and say, we need to empower young people. We need to empower this set of people. Oh, we need to... This community, oh, any woman who is pregnant must receive free antenatal care. Antenatal yeah. care, yeah. From, from the local yeah, health care center. True. But if, but if you are if you're, you are staying... And listen, oh, guys, if you are staying in a community that on Monday morning, church is in, there's a church in service, you have to leave that community. That community doesn't go far. If you look at where we're, those communities don't go far. <laughs> That's that's where the difference the difference in ideology can also prevent um like the the advantage of um black tax because if you manage to leave that society that environment and you are trying to help them to say oh Monday morning church is not is not good what is what is better for this community is if we set up businesses that will be functioning on Monday morning Tuesday morning Wednesday morning Thursday morning Friday morning go to church only on Sunday and they refuse. You have every right to say, you know what? Fuck you guys. Do you understand? You have every, mm -hmm. every right to say the only thing I'm using my money for is to set up businesses. I'm not setting up schools. And if they refuse, yeah. you have every right to say you're you know, not setting up churches. I'm not Are you setting up churches? Church? Exactly. exactly. That's why. I, that's why I say the the people, the person who has the money, has every right to decide how he wants to help. You but can't tell somebody the money. Right. How to spend his uh, money. It's important. I want to stress that it's important for you, for the person to know that it's important for him to come back to say, how do I help this community? Because that's mm. the community he made. He made, a, he made it out of that community, right? You know, so to ensure that a lot mm -hmm. of people, people move, make it away from that society, from that environment, to, he has to come to, he or she has to come and say, oh, I've made it now. I have resources to help two or three people to pull them away from this environment. But if the people we are trying to help refuse to help themselves, you don't have any choice but to pull back and mind your own business. And that's what Mikel has done. Yeah. Mikel has said, you know, mm. fuck it. And it's where we happen, make it happen. You know? Yeah. Shout out to Mikel, John O B. John O B Mikel. First of all, that's what Shout you call him. I enjoyed that interview. Yeah. Or just like he's calling himself the greatest it. Nigerian footballer. He's not he's the second greatest after Kano. Decorated, sorry. Why is Kano the greatest? Second? Most decorated. He called himself the most decorated. It's Kano I think now. it's Kano, right? So Kano has yeah. UEFA Cup. Kano, Kano has, has Champions League. Yeah, yeah. Kano has two African Cup. Has, has Kano has Kano has no African Cup of Nations. Uh, but he has Olympics go. He has Olympic gold. Forget for the Cup of Mikkel Nations. Forget Olympic. Olympic. Cup of Nations. But Mike has Olympic. Mike has Olympic bronze. But I don't don't do that. Can we won? Can we won Olympic gold? Not even nothing he has. Can we won Olympic gold? Mike has Olympic bronze. Mike won Olympic bronze. Uh huh. Yeah, he has <laughs> now. He has Olympic there's bronze. There's a difference. Can we won Olympic there's gold? A, there's a difference. Uh -huh. But Mike tried. Yeah, Mikano is the most decorated. We all know that. Like nobody's arguing that now. Kano mm -hmm. is but JJ. Uh, yeah, but Mike is the one. But Mikael is second. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Shout out to Mikael. He's a baller. Yeah. He's a baller. On your baller. On your baller. On your baller. On your baller. Cassie lawsuit against Didi. 
Yeah, Sean, man. I don't want to go into too much of this. That came, that came and went on and went fast. Yeah, real quick, man. Um, real quick. Yeah. Somebody said real quick. Somebody said he, he paid Cassie faster than his artists. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. I read the I read the the lawsuit. Eh? The one that was released by Cass's lawyers. Mm-hmm. And my mouth was open throughout. Yeah, my mouth was open was throughout because some of those things are read, yeah. they are wild. But you know, if you're a fan of pop culture and if you're like close to you know I won't say close, but like if you watch like several interviews, if you've seen like interviews, if you watch people talk on podcasts, you know that Didi is a wild guy. Like it's it's out there, you know, that Didi is a wild person, right? But I think what surprised me most was the the um the physical, you know, um abuse. Assault. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, that was that was what shocked me the most in that whole thing. The physical abuse when i saw that i was like wow okay i didn't i didn't know you know i didn't know i had no no ideas so yeah for me it was the physical abuse and um see guys giants i hope nobody listening to this podcast physically abuses anybody it is such a, it's, it's such a weak thing to do you're a weak man or you're a weak woman if you have to beat somebody to pass across, uh, pass across your points, like I, I don't expect anybody to be doing that, to be physically assaulting anybody. Is the lowest you can, is the lowest you can go in is the lowest you can go in life. Hmm. Is it is is the lowest? Like once you got into that, that you are at the bottom hmm. trenches. There's no going back. You know. So I, I, is that's. So, so the, the thing that's why I, I really especially for like older men, elderly people, like older men, like thirty, like especially forties, fifty. That I don't, I really don't like the idea of like you know dating like really young girls um, at that mm-hmm. age because it's easier to believe. It's, it's it's easier for an oppressive situation to happen because one of the age dynamics and also a the power dynamics. Like Didi is a powerful person. Mm. Dating a hmm. 19-year-old aspiring artist. There's hmm. only now, one way for, this thing is going to there's yeah. only one way this thing is going to go. Do you understand? Hmm. Like it's I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I really I don't like it. I don't like it at all. If you if you, hmm. even if you even remove the power dynamics, the age dynamics for me, of course she's a, she's of legal age. There's, there's no wrong in that. But I, there's there's just these dynamics I don't like. I and I, I really don't like it. Like it's something I've always I've always had a problem with, especially like with dating. When I see like an mm. when I see like age gap, especially between a man and a woman, it makes me uncomfortable because I feel it's easy to manipulate and oppress somebody like that. Shout out to Reginald Daniels. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh <laughs> my god. You know, so if maybe um if, if maybe like Didi had married her, I I know she's like the only she's exclusive, she's like the only woman in his life, you know. I wonder, I'm not sure she would have gone ahead to do this, you know. But there's, there's also that pain that, well, after using and dumping me, I'm here broken and you are ahead, like having fun. Did is not dating another like 25 year old and stuff like that. So there's there's there are reasons for her to like be really really salty and be and be really offended over what happened. Apart from like the trauma she has to do with, she has to like really be offended. So she she deserves that money. She deserves it because you know. Yeah, happy. I saw some people. I know some people saying that, that oh she just manip- she manipulated the public's um, emotion so that she can get paid. I, I don't I don't disagree with that. You can't you can't tell that. anybody yeah, she's, you don't you yeah. can't tell anybody how to seek justice. If it's money she wants, it's fine. If she wanted to take him to prison, it's fine. It's her own. She's the victim here, yeah, so allow her to to yeah. to, to, to seek justice. Uh, especially, the she, especially the way the way everything happened. You saw that story from New York Times. Everything ev- those things are not organic. Somebody gave them that. The lawsuit give them all the documents. No, obviously, so, oh, obvi- bro, the bro. There's something interesting. Happened. CMZ, no, 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 CMZ no, published another story. Just over. CMZ now published another story and said, "Oh, that um, they had the source inside the NYPD told them that they're investigating 
another sexual assault case. Everything is just to tension mm-hmm. the guy, you know, to say yeah, um, was the later, <laughs> the came out and said they're not investigating anything. The investigating anything. The the later came out to say they are they're not invest- investigating him. But First everything all, is to tell you that for, there was like a machine in place just like doing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now for a lot of Gen Zs that don't know like who did he is, man. If you were if it was, this was the, if you were a nineties kid, you know that this is where is one of the warriors of the nineties. If what you look at all the guys who survived, if you look at all the guys that survived the nineties, they're not normal people. No. It's, I don't know how Jay Z did that. Jay Z is so calm now. Maybe Jay Z is giving us PR version, but look at everybody. Jay Z once Snoop stabbed Snoop. somebody with a yes. bottle in his stomach. The, the, the yeah. difference for club Jay-Z and PDD is Jay Z. Jay Z is not a womanizer. Jay-Z also, Jay Z found redemption. I think Jay-Z matured yeah. a lot with age. He later understood that you can't live a gangster life you, if you are going you corporate. Should, you should understand that you, Jay-Z's, Jay-Z's, gang, Jay-Z's own and PDD's own are different. Jay-Z's like is a real life yeah. gangster. Like he was a drug dealer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jay-Z's, 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 Jay-Z don't see no, Jay-Z not, too many so, things. So, so, so Puff is not a gangster. Puff just has no, stupid Puff anger issues. Puff just has anger issues. Uh, is this somebody who... Anger issues. who yeah. I don't know who, who I don't was know very hard in his life was. and he became he was very hard in his life and became very successful, right? And because of his success, he had a lot of money. Money gives you power, you know. A powerful man who has like temperament issues. He's powerful, he's he's a savage, he doesn't give a fuck about anybody anybody. Jay-Z is a is mm. a is a street boy, he sold drugs. And <laughs> if you look at it, real he life, real life, real life street street guys. Right, don't move like that. No, they are really, they are really ruthless, but they have a lot of humanities in them, right? Because of how, what, situ- like the situations they've been in in life, right? Like if you see Steve. everything that Jay Z did, right? He stabbed his brother yeah. right? because his brother went to his knee, as his cousin or so. He shot his brother. He shot his brother. You know, <laughs> you know. So do you know what it yeah. is? Do you know what it is to carry a gun and shoot your brother? Was it shoot or stab? He shoot, shot him. his brother. Shoot, shoot, him. Shoot, shoot, shoot him. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I've just said yeah. that if and they listen to what happened that. in the 90s, if you hear all the 90s stories, some of you are mad, like, bro, oh. because it was wild. Mm. Niggas were wilding. Your favorite rapper could yeah. get stomped on in public. Like, the, the, most popular, the, the most popular rapper right now was. A try away from spending his life in jail, Snoop Dogg. Yeah, like, yeah. If you see Snoop now, nah, Snoop is on all adverts, he's on all commercials in America. People well, don't know that. This <laughs> people don't know that he was, <laughs> he was, he was uh, white America's most like worst nightmare. Hated, hated, like, hated. hated First of gangster rap. <laughs> The White House were doing campaigns against him and Tupac and Interscope yeah. for pushing gangster rap into America. It, I'm, I'm telling you, it will take, it will take, it will take one popular it, uh, TikTok page to just talk about this guy's past, and there will be a new wave of hatred for these guys because these guys were wild. <laughs> no, I no. If they bring out all the nineteen mm-hmm. stories that we know, bro. Yeah. <laughs> no, there, there are pages that do it. There's a page on Twitter that called Malcolm. Yeah, yeah um, but you know, there's one page thing. On, it, there's a page on uh, on Instagram. Tell them Blanco sent you. Oh, tell, tell them Blanco sent you. That one, that's, yeah. that page yeah. is good. Yeah. Good, good, good mm-hmm. page. That page. Love that page. Street legends. Oh, you want to see the page. real street legends? Now then we don't. Love that page. How poor them page. big meat, everybody, all of them. The real 50 cents. The real... That's how. That page. Do you know... The real... World story. Do you know, do you know that um, when Puff had that issue in the club with J-Lo and them shine? Yeah, his bodyguard was there. His name of his, the name of his bodyguard is Big Wolf, right? Big yeah. Wolf died years later by BMF. BFM, BFM, BMF shot him outside the club in Atlanta for an altercation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, go and read the story, bro. I don't know how did he does it, but he, that guy's involved with some gangster shit. BMF killed <laughs> this bodyguard. Yeah, Damn. in Atlanta. So was he around this? Yeah, scene? was he there? No, no, they are separated then. They are separated. Okay, they are separated After the old, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, this was like four years later. Four years later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. At the end yeah. of the day, guys, I think the biggest lesson here, without delving too much in this case, after reading everything, is please do not physically assault anybody. Right? Yeah, and choose your idols. Um, we, 
you know, and for those people saying Cassie went for the money grab, see, it's not a criminal case. And if it's not a criminal case, if it's a civil case, the only way you can punish then it's suing. the the uh, defendant in this case is to sue yeah, and collect their money. money. Yeah, yeah, take yeah. their money from them. It's painful as there's well a, because it's not a, a criminal case. Yeah, there's a better example than that. Um, O.J. Simpson, he was tried criminally. He wasn't and convicted. He lost, he won the but case, the families, yeah. yeah, but the families now sued him um, civil um, civil um, lawsuits and they took all his money. Yeah. 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 So the Jews didn't go to jail. You know, the glove don't fit. <laughs> but the he glove don't fit. Money. Yeah. You know. This week has been a uh, weird week for him. Very weird. Yeah, yeah. Um so, and see, no matter um, see there's no amount of money that Cassie can get for her to rob the memories, the memories. Yeah. Of, of those things that happen physically she might not see anything anymore but you see those memories and you know how these memories affect your body you know for mm -hmm. her to have the courage to come out and speak about all these things for, this is very powerful <laughs> for her to do they that they don't know the stories bro they don't know the stories <laughs> that's why I don't know, like, there's some things I can't be saying on the pod because I do, you know how big, about it. do you know how big Steve Stout is <laughs> Someone that broke a bottle. Yeah, it's public knowledge now. People know that one. Fam, I just want to tell you something that if you go to Diddy's debut album, right? Just go to the debut album, write Diddy's debut album, go to his Wikipedia page, and go and find the name of Diddy's debut album. Hey, what's the name of the debut album? It's, it's called No Way Out, my nigga. No Way Out. <laughs> no way. That's the name of the. <laughs> Do you understand? He put Styles P. He put the locks, he put Black Rob and I think GDev, and he put it there, no way out. And they had no idea what he was talking about. He was telling them there's no way out. There's no way out. Sign in, you don't out. sign up. You're in Babo, I think was on that cover. Yes. He's literally he literally told you no way out. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Lord. Nothing can you know that was nothing can yeah, save I you. Think, I think he knew about his dark ways, so that's why I started rebranding. If you notice like three or four yeah. years. A go. He started doing the brother love. Which 50 Cent oh. are saying that? You know New York guys know each other. 50 Cent are like, nah, nigga, I know you. I'm from Queens, you're from Harlem. I know you. <laughs> they say the See, only two people, the only two people that have immunity from 50 Cent is hmm. Eminem and Dr. Dre. I'm yeah. Every other person can collect. Jay-Z don't collect. collect. Everybody don't collect. Jay See, Jay-Z is tired. Jay-Z is tired. Oh, he did de not Jay Z every day. Every day. Every day. Any chance he will give you will give Jay Z. He doesn't care. He said, brother love, brother love, brother love. Brother, brother, brother. Brother. See, eh, the most entertaining guys eh, are those OGs from New York. They, I don't know why. All of them can tell stories for some reason. They are good storytellers. Yeah, they, they have so many you. They can tell they yeah. have so many stories. Yeah. Yeah. Mad stories, yeah. all of them. Yeah, Nori, Fadjo, 50 Cent. Ah, the only person that doesn't talk, mm. the only two people that don't talk is Nas and Jay-Z. Right, yeah, Nas but because those guys, they know now. They know if they... They know if they talk yeah, anyhow now. Uh, they don't talk. The remaining are the talk. Oh. Ah, Nori, you know, Fadjo. They have the best stories. Cameron, Mace. Do you understand? Yeah, Jim Jones. Yeah, Jim Jones. All the New York guys, they all have great stories. Keith, fabulous. That's why for me, like, NY rap is still, is still the best kind of rap. Sorry. That's the mecca, just man. Saying. That's the mecca. Just saying, just saying. All right, where are we on the docket? Okay, there's this 22-year-old girl That's with this 50-year-old sugar daddy. Oh, let's we do that one. Let's do that one. Let's just do that one. Right. Don't <laughs> catch me. But yeah, let's just quickly do that. 22 year old dating 50 year old. What's the problem, guys? Why was uh, everybody going bonkers over that story? She's going to find another 50 year old now. And the 50 year old man <laughs> is going to find another 22 year old. It's not a problem. Yeah. It's, just an, it's just because she came to Twitter and said something. Do you think, you know, how many 50 year olds are 20 years in this country? I want to say something. Eh? Go ahead. Since understand. the beginning of time, since the beginning of time, old men and young women. We have started dating and till the end of time it will continue to happen whatever the outrage is on twitter or not because you people don't come out and smell the coffee or what's really happening you know yeah. so there's no wala she did what she had to do the man wanted to marry her she said no marriage and the man moved on and married who wanted to marry and that girl will find another old man that'll be servicing her that'll be financially servicing her 
Uh, whether she gives anything in return, that's not best known to how I don't know about that one. But well, I think it's a form uh, of it's a, it's a form of black tax. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, it's no, because there. because because it's it's financially motivated now. Is it financial? It is. financial. It's financial. It's financial. That relationship doesn't exist. Bro, yeah. not it twenty years. No twenty two. Money driven. No twenty two. Girl, girl is dating a. It's funny. Uh, no, no. It's a sixty five year old. No, no. Sixty five year old mega. It's not. It's always a sixty five year old rich man. It's never a mega exactly. or a bricklayer. <laughs> They never see the qualities in the. But the financial worth must be there for you to marry somebody that old. So, yeah, so. come on. I think why so what we talk you know, about why this makes sense for them is because the woman knows the girl knows what she wants from this relationship. You know, mm-hmm. just imagine if this imagine if we if East Tunubu now bans this this sort of relationship in Nigeria. Do you know how many girls <laughs> now go to school again in Nigeria? Uh-uh. You have single handedly taken back the girl child education back thirty years. <laughs> and female education, the, female the, education, the, female welfare. You've taken it back. To 1972. <laughs> and we are in this new feminism era where we want to give women the power. It's, it's, women are the future. So, you know, we have to empower the girl child. And sugar daddyism is part of what is driving the education of the girl Bro, child. Do you know how many yes. families sugar daddies are feeding? Bro. <laughs> <laughs> God. Do you know how many no. weddings sugar daddies are sponsoring? Sugar daddies are dead. <laughs> The high table. The truth is Those are the fun guys now. Those are the which series do you want? I go find any series where you did. That's it now. <laughs> are you telling me now? Uh-uh. These are Come the true VCs. They are the true venture just, capitalists. The true VCs now. Exactly. It's like you you're telling what? it's like you go to Silicon Valley and say you are banning an African startups from when, the when funding. Start-up you know what you're looking for funding. I don't know. Do you know what is going to happen to the ecosystem? Do you understand? How do you want to run uh, what they call that thing in Nigeria that we're all we're all we're all saying that startups are doing uh, financial inclusion? Do you understand? Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> you to financial inclusion. Financial inclusion. If you, do you understand? So the founder will go and look for a a, a VC. Same. Uh, you know why? You, you know why it makes sense for younger women. Because the words and tears of the body no go today. How much old man want knock? How many want knock? I'm not, they know they knock See, now. Times, they know even guess. Brother, times, know they know that big, that that big don't pass. Yeah. Yeah. Don't but guess what? Them. But guess what? Sure, sometimes they, I feel genuinely. Two, I feel genuinely mm. they don't even want to do anything. It's the black task. They just want to hear. They just want to hear. <laughs> this that guy that works in Access Bank that's what, uh, that is any one fifty. How is she going to do her masters? Ah, yes, sir. <laughs> I still take care of her father and mother. How is she yeah, going to do her yeah, master's? Yeah. Well, sugar daddy is that. Some, and most times, maybe she's so, the first. Like, let's be honest with ourselves now. I think, oh, no. see, what we we just like thinking in absolutes. Oh, small girl, sugar yeah. daddy. Oh, this girl is not doing anything. She's just useless. No, this girl is hardworking, brilliant, yeah. smart. Mm-hmm. But she earns more than 75000 after tax. Yeah, after yeah. tax. How you want me to do? She's the first daughter. She going to, first she, child. She, goes, she has, she go, has huh? a younger brother that is going that just finished jump. That has mm-hmm. to go into uni. So she has yeah. this man that you know come and then they have some sort of exchange. The man gives her money. How much do you need? Who is he? How much does he need? He's going back to school. How much is it? It's four hundred thousand. I'll send it to you. The man has helped the family, and it makes sense for them because if he's dating the regular GD in Bagada, that will use seven rounds and also give you one thing. Don't give you thank you. It doesn't make sense now. So let me go to a higher man that won't knock me. That will talk about the issues of life. And he gave me one million, one two two point five million. Guess what? Yeah. She will come with all her problems to the man. She say, "See, my boss said blah blah blah." The guy will say, "What's your boss saying?" That's not the approach to take. This is what you need to do. X Y Z. Guide real life advice. Thing. So there's there's yes. financial assistance, there's real life advice and coaching and mentoring. These are the <laughs> things involved, and we are we are failing to are admit. Yeah. And you will not see her off when she's getting married. You will see her when she's getting like, married. That's like why C funding you. That's like why C funding you, giving you, yes, giving you mentorship, stuff like that. Or more, the benefits, the perks, the perks are too much. (laughs) Date an old man today. Date an old man today. Don't be dating young boys. They only take and take. They will take the best of your youth. 
Oh, I have Steve asking us that from that. They'll tell you VCs can give you money, but we want beyond money. What else can we get from a VC? Yeah, this is what these men are doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mentorship, tutorship. The ecosystem. And, get, and guess what? Introduction into other places. Oh, my friend is looking for somebody to work in his bank or and everything. I send send me your CV. Let me send to him. The salary range is around four hundred to five hundred thousand. She goes from one seventy five. I can give you recommendation because I have five hundred million naira in the accounts in, in the bank account. And, yeah. Do you understand? And guess what? It's not like it's just um, it's on merit. She will do it. Yeah. She knows the work, so she's hired. But of course, it came yeah. through. What are we talking about? And you people want to start shouting. Oh, you boys are you are hungry. You boys are poor. That's your problem. You people are jealous. Young, young, young men. Yeah. And guess what? Go to the young men listening to this and think and thinking we're advocating for old men to carry all your babes. There are plenty <laughs> women. If you see a twenty-two year old that does not want to date you, wants to date a fifty-year-old. Well, look for another one. You know the no. problem. Oh, thank you. You know the problem. That one, one date now. That one fight day their eye. Leave her. There is another twenty-two-year-old in your range, in your in your own age group range that would like you. That would date Mister Big Staff. That's the one you should be going for. Guy, yeah, why, 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 why this low blows are yes, so much? Uh, uh, this <laughs> low blows are <laughs> too much. Where they go out to? Do you understand? We did a social experiment when we were working in post. Now all the girls said, "Yes, you know, no, no, no." We asked them, "Will you date somebody that is working in Chicken Republic?" All of they almost cost us out of the building that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so at the end of the day, my brother. All right, let's get into Ask the Giants. Um, I haven't read this, but the headline says SOS Ask the Giants. Hope you have not record yet recorded. All right, let's go. Hello, loose talk giants. I've been a long-time listener since the first iteration of Loose Talk. I stumbled on your pod by chance. I am what you guys call the one percent, and seeing a lot of mediocrity among people with most with the most resources, it was just cool to see people actually taking culture seriously in Nigeria. It ended when I was 24, and years later, in a totally different universe, I couldn't believe my eyes. I saw City Boys were back. Now, before you misgender me. <laughs> okay, first of all, I, before, as I read this first paragraph, how many of you thought this was a woman? I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna lie, I thought I, it was a man, though. I ain't gonna lie, I thought it was a guy. <laughs> me too. I, I thought it was a we guy. Need, guys, we need to stop doing this thing. A lot of women listen to this podcast. How are we going to stop doing this thing? How? You, 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 keep, the data, now. you keep saying oh. a lot of women listen to this podcast. So, like, I need numbers, I need data. My <laughs> statistics will go chop. No, no, no vex. No vex. No vex. SEO God. No vex. <laughs> All right. So now, before you misgender me, I am what you call a grown ass woman. Hmm. You know, when a woman says, I'm a grown ass woman, you have to do the neck, the neck thing. <laughs> I'm a oh, grown ass woman. Oh, right? I work hard, play harder, care for the people around me, and pay my own bills. It's not always easy, but I'm lucky. Before I go into my question, I just want to segue and say that and probably many of the listeners have the biggest crush on you guys. It's weird because it wasn't a thing before, but maybe because you guys are grown-ass men now. But really, it's Steve's sexy, sexy voice and boyish humor, Osak's quick wit and, and, wit and sarcastic jokes, or ALT2's charm and first class banter. First of all, I don't think Steve's voice is sexy. I don't think so. Yeah, personally. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I, 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 I personally think that you're hating now. I think you're hating now. I think you're hating now. It's just for my voice. That was no reality. Look at some paper. You know, you don't think like that. So you, you you didn't think I was hating all, all up till now? <laughs> no, 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 I just it's a new phenomenon, bro. I just thought <laughs> now nah, today I first think I'm right. gonna lie you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you so much for the kind words. Um, it's nice to have personalities that are not toxic and don't take themselves too seriously representing Nigeria. My apology to the apologies to the wives. I think the wives are fine. <laughs> Including IOS, my mentions are <laughs> including IOS. Mm-hmm. My mentions or my intentions are pure. I'll even help you fight anybody's. 
Trust me, um, Miss Grown-Ass Woman. Just trust me. Trust us. They are, they, we don't get time for money. <laughs> no body zone here. Bodies are expensive. I keep telling you, people, I'm trying to save <laughs> money. Sure these, these, these young men in the... I, I um, they suspect you once in a while, but the way I know how I own moves, I own not have money for bodies. 150k, I know they do, bro. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I own not have money. I own, I own, Steve, I was like, how are we saving money in dollars? How are we saving more money in dollars? I knew I, I was serious about this, <laughs> this savings. Okay. Um, oh, my question is one of the hearts. I am not the kind of girl that falls for a guy easily. Growing up in Nigeria, it has always been difficult to find someone I could respect and give a chance. A lot of the guys, a lot of the Lagos guys lack drive, are content living off, are content living off their parents, don't have any care or compassion for the world around them, or worse, they are behaving like their parents' generation and already thinking of how to chop money. So I do a lot of internal vetting before I give a guy a chance, and it mostly works. I've had a few relationships and they've all been fairly good with fairly good men who have treated me with kindness and respect for the most part. As you know, life, as you know, life, things, um, as you know, life, things get in the way that no one really prepares for. And all everyone can talk about is cheating, money, side chicks, never the real issues that put partnerships to test career, family, mental health, lifestyle. Hmm, that's quite interesting, actually. Um, now I work for an international company and have been living abroad for a few years. Very randomly, my best friend and I, another Nigerian, started seeing each other in a different light. It was really out of the blue because he's Muslim and he and really practices. And in my experience, you can pretty much be a log of wood. Muslim guys don't register us wayward Lagosians. So it was a safe friendship because that didn't cross my mind. I was in a foreign country and we were really there for each other, providing each other with company, good banter, jokes, work issues, but really never or but never really got into personal stuff or into whom we were dating or whatnot. After years of being just friends, one thing led to the other and we hooked up. Hooking up turned into intimacy and before long, the combination of our friendship and sexual chemistry made the relationship explosive. We've been lovers and besties ever since. He makes me feel safe, turns me on, and we are always there for each other. His religion has never been an issue for us. We talk about marriage and I've always made it clear. I am more spiritual and would never convert, convert to Islam, even just for optics. He's always said he never want, even want me to be but he casually mentioned a year ago that it was important for him to pass down his religion to his kids and it was a deal breaker for him. I was confused with that somewhat ultimatum because if that was his stance, it would just assume he would never have entered a relationship with me. No, we would have or we could have hooked up for a while and called it a day. Before this becomes a cautionary tale, we have had you know, we had we have had a good relationship. He prays fast, doesn't drink, I respect his boundaries, and he gives me my space to be um, to also be myself, a fake Christian heathen who loves to have fun, and it works. I see how his religion has instilled discipline in him, and I even find that super hot. We have both had a busy year, so I didn't really face the issue but I brought it up to him a few times recently and he was shocked at how certain he was um, that this is what he wanted and it's a deal breaker for him. I'm just kind of put off by being put in a position to agree to something I don't fully comprehend. I also have a difficult relationship with religion. I believe in God, but I don't buy into the institution and don't agree with I don't agree with greed, hate, and bigotry committed in the world in the name of God. Also, no one can convince me that some guy called Jesus 2,000 years ago has something to do with me. So, 
then how am I supposed to be committed to raising my kids in yet another religion I don't really believe in? All right, guys, help me. We have talked and talked tiresomely, and we and while we throw tantrums and gets upset when I say that we can't go forward because of this ultimatum, he's never tried or he has never said he changes his mind. Can't even say it's family pressure. Because even though I would not be their first choice, they have accepted it and they are and are always asking when we are getting married. It hurts my pride, but I'm trying not to operate from a place of ego because I believe we genuinely love each other. I just want to make a decision and move on with my life because it's draining. What do you guys think I should do or what should I consider? Also, are the fans of Lustor called the Giants? Maybe I missed the memo. Yes, the fans of Lustock are called the Giants. FYI, Nana, I tried to go to Lustock website and it is blocked. Nana, please look into that. Yes, the fans of Lustock are called the Giants. We're all called the Giants. Everybody's called the Giants. We are the Giants. You guys are the Giants. Everybody that writes in the Giants. Wow, this is this is a true ass the Giants <laughs> um, meal that came in. This is a big one. This is a, this is the big R, baby. The big R. The big R. Hmm. Religion. The big R. Relationship is not the big R. It's religion is the big R. Okay. Before we go further, Steve, are you here? Okay. Big one, like I said. Big one, big one, big one. Steve, hit it first. The big R. <laughs> oh, what is one? So I did trick you. <laughs> Trick you because this one, uh, this one I did. This one I did true. Make me sweat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hmm. it's, 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 it's complicated. It, it is. It I is. don't know where to start because uh, this one uh, involves so many things. It involves a lifetime commitment, it involves kids, hmm. Hmm. it involves a lot of things, you know. It's um, lots. I'm going to go with them, um, the popular. You know, how do I say it now? I don't know. The only good part of it, this this, this whole thing, is that you are not like an overly religious person. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I don't know, man. Just just drop a list of you know what you like about this guy, what you don't like about him, and see which one what ways each other, man. Pros um, and cons. Pros and cons. I, I really don't know how um, religion is very, very delicate. Religion is a delicate. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say, guys. It's very nice. Just talk your mind. Talk your mind. I don't like that's right. That's why people there's write. Nothing, talk your mind. There's nothing on my mind right now. Like I'm confused. I genuinely don't know what to do. I genuinely don't know what to if say. you were put in if you were put in the position, what would you do? If you were you know what I'll do now. Like I'd I, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not really just. Like that. I'll, go, I'll go ahead with it now if it's me because I. I just don't think it's that. I don't know, man. I don't think it's that for me. And it's it's just just me and how I view religion and all that. Um, also important. I also understand how important it is in in the context of everything. So I don't. I really don't know to be very. I play the fifth. I right, please go. We don't have the first of all, we don't have the fifth in Nigeria. We don't even have the first. Talk less of the fifth. Uh, say you know talk, then go beat you for inside that place. <laughs> you, go, you go talk everything. Um, I believe this is one of the questions that only the person involved can answer because uh this one don't pass. This one is your it is your own shoe, so you only know where it pinches. Um you've come out to say that you know you don't want to get married with sub to somebody that is not uh of the same religion with you, even though you're not a very religious person. And I get that, I understand that. And you making that decision obviously shows, you know, uh where your he- where your head space is or where your mind space is at the moment. And you just need us to confirm or to basically confirm what's in your head. We can't do that for you at the end of the day because we don't even know you. You only, you only wrote a letter to us. We don't know you from the first day you were born to where you are right now. So we can't make that decision for you. All I hope is that um, you sound smart anyway, you sound knowledgeable, you sound educated. You just have to do a have like deep deep reflection 
like you have to look at is this the person that i truly want to marry like 30 years for 30 years from now 40 years from now if i look back will i be upset or will i be sad that i didn't marry this person you know love is never a fairy tale affair as beyonce said beyonce sang once who wants a um what's that thing she sang uh, fairy, fairy tale love affair or something like that so you have to decide everybody bears his own cross in, in marriage in love it's basically called sacrifice you know john 3 16 so will you sacrifice your religion to my your prince charming or will you say fuck it i'm gonna kiss the next frog out there and you'll become my prince so it's only you at the end of the day i suggest that when it's 2 a.m look at your wake up look at your mirror and start doing some self some deep reflection because only you can do this because marriage is a one person thing you lose talk will not get married with you we will not be there at the end of the day it's only you that will carry your cross so my sister this is thus far as the lord led me now you have to <laughs> you have to you have to carry your own journey uh, uh, Sags, she's a christian right but she doesn't mm-hmm. really she's not that religious like, but the like, guys like, in, yeah like guys, probably like guys, me the guys in, yeah the guys in muslim and really religious right yeah the guys, the guy is religious and wants yeah. his kids, like I wants his children to also like follow in his first step and be, mm-hmm. and be Muslims. Yeah, man. I don't know, man. Okay. Here's my own right. Here's how I see it. For a couple of things. I'm gonna bounce in in a few areas. First of all, how much do you love somebody? How much do you love this person? Do you love this person to the point where you want to spend your rest of your life with this person, irrespective of anything? First of all, this person is not going to cause you harm. You've already told us the good side of the person makes you feel safe. I guess that's one of the things you mentioned. And a lot of other beautiful things. Do you see yourself not spending the rest of your life with this person? That's the first question. Like, how much love do you have for this person to the point where if you're not with this person, you feel like you don't have any air? That is the kind of relationship or marriage you should be going into. Somebody that you know that man, I I don't understand what you, I don't I don't know if you get what I'm saying, Steve. That um, uh, if I don't if 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 this doesn't work with this person, like man, what the hell? This is the person. Every other thing then becomes bleak compared to you being with this person, right? And again because you've also mentioned the attributes of this person. So it's not like we said, you know, you're going to somebody who beats you once in a while, but you still love him. That's why you still want to end up with him. That's not what we're talking about here. We've certified. Is this guy certified fresh? Boom. Yes. This is the kind of person. Right. And I'll give you an example. Right. And Steve, I, they know this story. I had a girlfriend once who broke up with me. And this is the first time, like I thought I was going to marry this lady. This was the first time I actually even showed my mom, like a girl I was dating. And I remember she breaking up with me because we're both like AS, right? We have both had the AS genotype. And and I was telling her, and she was like, we are, we're both AS. And so, you know, we, we stand the risk of having kids who are SS. And I remember the first thing I told her was, I don't understand. We don't even have kids yet. It's us. What are you talking about? Like, it's just me and you. Where are the kids? There are no kids. What are you thinking beyond that? Like, it's me and you here. I thought two of us had something. And the two of us have something. Like, there's nothing that can stop us. Nothing that has, you know, that has not been produced yet can stop two of us being together. Like, it's two of us versus the world. Do you get? And that's how I see how people should go into marriages. Like you are with your ride or die till the end of the world. Every other thing comes after both of you, but it's both of you, you know. And and I think that's like a good approach to see it, that if you feel like you can be without this person, then what's the point? But if you feel like you can't, then you are, you are now experiencing something that you continue to experience when you get married, which is compromise. You're going to compromise a lot. Both parties are going to compromise. And in this case, it's a test for you to compromise. This person has said, hey, man, like, I am a strong religious person. And I want our children 
to you know take this religion quick question right if you are willing to be with somebody who is of a different religion than you and the person is a strong religious person to the point where you say you consider it hot why don't you want your children to also be of that religion if the person says you should what's then the big deal if you can be with somebody who is of a certain religion what is now the difference that, how does it now a, become that's different a, that's a very good that's a very good question that your children if, if it's good enough for you how come it's not how come it won't be good enough for your children yeah why why so does this still have to do with religion or does this have to do with some sort of identity mm. that you want your children to then have some identity carved in your own you know it's like a venn diagram now you want that new circle to also be part of your own circle not just his own circle do you understand? And that's another question you need to ask yourself. So that's, you know, that's what, you know, I'll tell you, man, bro, if I ended up marrying somebody who was of another religion and I don't give a fuck about these things, you know, how me, Steve, you know how these things like we're, we're living in a simulation. This is not even a real world. We're all going to just die and go. It's not that big. It's, to me, I don't see how it's a big deal. We're all praying to God. Everything is going to like farm, you know, Think about it that way. If you really love somebody, you want to stay with that person. And I get your point and I understand you saying he's not like he's not even moving, he's not meeting you halfway. But how does he meet you halfway? Okay, half of our kids are going to be Christian, half of our kids are going to be Muslim. What's halfway there? It's a good question to ask. Maybe in some other way he will compromise because he say, Hey man, you took one for me. I'll compromise for you in another place. And you should already start seeing elements of somebody who can compromise. So from the relationship you had so far, how much has it compromised in other aspects for you? Has that happened? If that has happened, then you know, okay, this is a great person who has also compromised for me in other areas. Maybe I compromise for him as well. That's my feedback. Mm. That's the good start to the you players for all this, uh, this advice. The good soon they start to the players for this episode. episode. <laughs> You are the lead researcher for this episode. Take it, god damn it. Let me put it to the newsletter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Round of applause for me. Thank you. So that's my that's my own feedback. Oh. Awesome. That's my own that's feedback. Good. Love is love. Love is good. love. Good. Thank you, Dr. Love. Love is love. But I love, thank no, you. No, 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 I beg, I beg. I beg. Hey, 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 hey. I use God, beg. <laughs> Anyways, man, it was nice. It was a nice episode again. It was yeah. a nice episode again. Thank you guys so much for rocking with us. Thank you so much. We'll catch you on the next episode of the pod. Sayonara. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.